June 27, 2017, 2 a.m., Mackinac Island State Park. I used to be what one would use the term workaholic, with little if any free time to myself and my hobbies. I worked in the tech department of a big corporation based on operating out of Ann Harbor. This is where I'd be dedicating myself non-stop to back-breaking hours of sorting through code, beta testing, and other menial tasks for which I'm overqualified, but do nonetheless. I had finally reached a breaking point when I was rushed to a hospital after suddenly collapsing at work. This led me to be given some time off. Deciding that spending some time, or little time I had outdoors, would be the most productive way to counteract the effects of working long hours. I called up my brother and arranged for us to spend some time exploring Mackinac Island State Park. My brother was always the outdoorsy type back when we were growing up. He'd always lavished in an opportunity to explore and enjoy all the perks that nature had to offer. On one of his fine adventures in the great outdoors, he was introduced to this island by some friends of his. I couldn't hear the end of how great it was since. So, feeling that a retreat far away from the hustle and bustle of the big city would be grand for my recovery, I called my brother and asked him to introduce me to scenic wonders that the great outdoors had to offer. As expected, he was elated to hear that we finally had a chance to bond over the features that nature had to offer. And he could finally prove to me that camping and the outdoors were not a boys-only activity. He promised to fetch me on the weekend, so we could then spend an entire week exploring every nook and cranny of this island. He made the drive to my house, arriving at around 2 p.m. to pick me up for the 251-mile journey to Mackinac Island from Ann Harbor. After a couple of pit stops along the drive that afforded us some much-needed bond time and some really delicious homemade pies at a variety of diners along the way, we finally made it to the island right around midnight the same day. After entering the island via the bridge, we then had to abandon our vehicle as there was a ban on the use of cars on this island. This rule stemmed from a law that was passed down back in 1898. It was explained to us by one of the hotel receptionists where we stayed at for the night. We were exhausted from our long journey, but still anxious to explore all the natural wonders that the island had to offer. Especially, any of its natural wonders rarely ever touched by man. However, these were far and few in between as I would discover the following day, when to my dismay, the island turned out to be more of a resort than a holistic nature getaway. A disappointment I didn't spare saying to my brother, but something I should have seen in advance. To this, he proposed a solution of checking out an unexplored patch of wilderness on the island. He promised that although camping wasn't permitted on the island, he had been introduced to a spot where visitors can secretly have a true outdoor experience. He was shown the spot by a past guide as one of his previous stays here at the inn. He was also intent on proving that outdoor activities were a not male only club. And seeing how a retreat in a nature could do me well. I was intent on humoring him. We settled upon a rustic woodland area near the coast. It must have been more than two miles long, with some really large rock formations that helped ensure we did not get lost in all the foliage. We had been on the island for an entire day and a half at that point, and it was dawn on a Tuesday when my brother got us a spot to start a campfire in amongst all the trees. There was evidence we weren't the first to take this course of action, of course, with the cinders of what appeared to be a previous campfire in this area. Some that looked as though they were made in abandon only a few days before we arrived. My brother got to making a campfire himself, and he managed to carry in some snacks with him so he could make s'mores. Everything was going well, and I really did start to feel as though my spirit and physical health were getting a well-deserved boost. 
not to mention that I rarely got to spend time with my brother due to my work commitments. So this time that we were having together was really nice. This was until nighttime began to kick in, around 7 p.m. when the rustling of wind in the background turned into what sounded like someone skulking in the bushes. At first, we thought that it might be someone from the island who had wandered into the forest, or maybe an employee of the island's hotels or stores. But after my brother called out in the direction of the noise, and no response, we assumed it was an animal. We could immediately tell that whatever was lurking in the bushes was very big, and from the trees that were shaking in the background and the sounding of branches cracking as they were being walked over, my brother's calling out only seemed to entice the creature even more, as now the noise grew louder as the creature came closer to our campsite. We could start to make out its features from its silhouette in the dark. What my brother saw and I, coming towards us, made us so scared we could do nothing but react and stare in absolute fear. What we saw staring right at us was this huge bipedal dog-like creature that was so tall it stood equal in height to a smaller pine tree just behind it, maybe seven or seven and a half feet tall. It stood on two legs from what we saw and remained standing the entire time. Its body, especially its torso, looked similar to that of a man with a face that resembled a wolf. It had a short snout and its mouth grimaced at us in a horrifying snarl. As we watched drool, it stopped short of coming completely out of the dark and into the light shining off the fire as we looked in absolute terror. It was almost as if we were in a standoff, us staring at it and it staring back at us. My brother mustered just enough courage to reach for a steel tong that we had used to cook the s'mores. And as soon as he did this, this thing took notice and quickly took off deep into the foliage. Despite its menacing appearance, it seemed more curious and stockative than anything else. We instinctively knew to immediately leave the campsite and head in a direction opposite of where we saw this creature. We haven't shared yet what we saw with anyone else fearing they'd think we were on a drug binge or drinking spree in the woods. But we know what we saw, and although we've never talked about it to each other again, we both know that we have each other's back. It's been a few Novembers since this happened, but it's still terrifying all the same. Even typing it out, it still brings back really bad memories, but... I feel it's an important story to share and really disproves the notion growing up that monsters don't exist because simply what my friend and I saw that night is something straight out of a Stephen King novel. You have to understand that right before this happened, a very close family friend who I've been friends with for a very long time and still am, her boyfriend of six years cheated on her and then dumped her not only being emotionally distraught, but she was really needing company and did not want to be alone. Since I was free for the weekend and didn't have any plans, I offered to come stay at her place for the weekend. It would keep her mind occupied and keep her spirits good. I showed up and we had a little bit of a girl's night watching movies, eating popcorn, just doing anything we could to keep her mind off her ex-boyfriend. Because of her, not having the greatest finances in the world, she ended up with this little podunk place, kind of on the outskirts of town. A lot of woods around, but still very pretty on the outside. It wasn't like it was run down or anything, just very small. But it was just her living there, where her ex could and would occasionally visit her when they were together. So, what else more could you need? At about 11, or maybe midnight, my phone was down to about 9 or 10% battery. And I realized, oh crap, I left my charger and clothes in the car. So, I headed out to my car to retrieve all my stuff 
since I was staying the weekend. And that's right when I saw what looked to be or appeared to be a werewolf. I stepped out on her front porch, clicked the unlock button, and as soon as I was doing this in unison, the front porch light and my car lit up together at the same time, illuminating the entirety of the area, which right before, as I clicked the button, before opening the door was pitch black. As soon as both lights came on, I was screaming, totally startled by what I saw. Standing, maybe not even six feet behind my car, approaching the house was this really tall, I hate to say it, cliche werewolf figure. Instantly, I felt like I was in slow motion, like... My brain was scrambling to try and just make sense of what I was taking visually in. I was seeing it right in front of me. The most realistic werewolf costume I had ever seen in my life. But, as it was moving, I could clearly see its defined muscles working under its skin, and the way it was breathing coming towards me. This was something straight out of a movie or a Stephen King novel, which I would know... I've read a lot of his books growing up. I love him as an author. That's why the first thing I thought of when I saw this, believe it or not, is his book Silver Bullet, which is all about werewolves. I was now screaming, turned around, went back in the house, locking the door. Now, as I'm coming back in the house, fumbling with my keys, trying to lock the door, my friend who's curious, but also now panicked, rushes to the window to see what's wrong. Then, she began screaming as she starts asking me, what is that thing? She now sees it too. That's when she closes the blinds and we both run and dive into the kitchen, grab the largest knife she had, and sat there, huddled together, crying. Within a minute, we hear this thing walk like a man would on two legs to the very back door where her sliding glass door is. Luckily, that had blinds on it too. It was very aggressively trying to open the door as if this animal knew what handles were. So that means this was either a person in a very convincing costume or this was something else entirely. We were dealing with a real life monster here. It was rattling the door so violently and so hard that maybe after 10 or 15 seconds, it gave up. Paced around the house a couple of more times, pounding on the windows, scratching on the house. Not heavily though, but I believe if it wanted to. This thing possessed the strength to shatter a window. But it was like it was trying to find a weak point into the house. Like it was strategizing and thinking trying to get one in at one point. It kept wiggling the door handle of the front door violently, as if hoping it would release. Luckily, it never did. We went through a period of time where we did not hear it at all, but still far too worried to get it from the kitchen floor. So, we decided to stay put, still crying, still scared, the only sound being the outside and the TV faintly going. About 12 minutes now goes by, and I do remember this because I was looking right at the clock on the oven, which was right next to where we were on the floor, perfectly visible. We heard a couple, very loudly, distinctive pops. It sounded like something being blown up or a large balloon popping. Two of them, actually. And then silence. We heard nothing. Eventually... My friend and I just fell asleep, huddled next to each other, knives still in our hands. I was the first to wake up. I jolted my friend awake, telling her, We made it. It's morning. The light's out. It was now maybe about 7.45, maybe 8 a.m. at this point, and it's almost winter. So the sun is kind of late on rising, especially here up north. My phone was now dead, and... Because I had an Android, she had an iPhone. I had no choice but to go and grab my charger from the car. I was going to figure something out that, and just thinking I cannot let my friend stay here. She didn't have a car at the time, and she mainly got rides back and forth. As I went out to my car, 
I realized something horrifying. Even though the sun was up, and I was now no longer afraid to go into the darkness, the two back tires of my Prius were completely flat. I walked over to check them out. It looked as if somebody had slashed them, but upon looking closer, I realized that something large had actually bit into them, popping them with its teeth. There were these huge puncture holes in both the back tires. I mean, these tires weren't just a little flat. They were completely flat. And I had already used my spare and never bothered to replace it about a year or two ago before this. To make a long story short, I ended up calling a tow truck. I had the guy give me his personal opinion on what he thought happened. He told me, Sweetheart, you either have a very aggressive bear that bit these tires, or you ran over some spikes, but something happened here. Anyway, I took my friend with me back to my place where she would stay for two more weeks before returning back to her house only for a couple of days before going to stay with her family for a couple of months, then permanently moving there. She eventually went back to town, but only for a day to collect her belongings, never staying overnight. Whatever happened that night, we don't talk about it. I wish I knew more about what it is that we saw, this wooly, hairy, shaggy, wolf-looking thing, but unfortunately, I'm not a biologist. Thank you for taking the time to read this encounter. I hope, if anything, it's provided at least some entertainment, even if it's been at my expense. Even if it has been at my friend's expense as well. Thank you. March 6th, 2010, 7 p.m. Corvallis, Oregon. I hail from a family of renowned hunters. My siblings and I grew up listening to my father's tales of exotic hunts in Africa. The time our great-grandfather fought off a large grizzly bear with nothing but a hunting knife. So, it's no surprise that I developed a knack for the hunt at a very early age. And I know that a female interested in hunting might seem unusual to some people. In Oregon, it's a lot more common than you might think. Whenever I did go hunting, it'd always be in the company of either my older brother or father who learned the tricks of the trade from his father, who, in turn, learned what he knew about hunting from his father before him, and so on. It wasn't that I couldn't exactly hunt on my own, or that I needed help to do the heavy lifting, but having been on what must have been hundreds of outings by now into the great outdoors, you soon come to learn that animals aren't the only thing to be on the lookout for in the wild. And having company is a good way to be safe of any dangers that may lurk in the woods. I was always going on about hunting in the outdoors to several of my friends. One of them, who was studying forestry at the Oregon State University. They told me specifically about a hunting and forestry trail in this here area, and she told me it was well worth checking out. It was in the Corvallis area, and it belonged to a sustainable logging company. The company was even nice enough to offer free permits to anybody who wanted to hunt and hike on their land. They also gave lectures at the College of Forestry at Oregon State, and this gave my friend access to the permits rather easily. But, most importantly, access on the weekends, which was the quietest time to explore their property, without having to worry about other hunters and hikers getting in your way. Since the permit belonged to my friend, and I always took my older brother with me on my hunts, we all made reservations to explore the lands on the upcoming Saturday in March of 2010. When the day finally came, I could barely contain my excitement, which was only heightened by the fact that we weren't technically permitted to hunt in March. However, if we got caught, my friend claimed to know the perfect spot to catch deer that was far away from any logging activities and free from the prying eyes of any law enforcement. Not knowing her to be someone who'd make something up like that, we took her on her word very seriously and arrived at Starker Forest early in the morning. 
The sheer size of the land and forests within was truly astonishing. Some areas were dense evergreen forests, while others were reserved for logging. Still, other areas were open spaces with thick stumps in the spots where once mighty trees stood. The majority of the forest was quiet, and the only people we encountered were loggers on the job and park rangers sometimes doing the rounds. Since visitors weren't technically permitted to explore on weekends, my friend's student card served as a very handy tool to stop any suspicion our presence brought up. Also, our bags were big enough to conceal the one Montana X3 rifle that we had successfully managed to hide for hunting deer. Dawn had come and gone with us, heading deeper into the forest, far away from any logging and rangers, and it began to seem as though that we were lost, even though my friend insisted she'd taken the route before. That's when we started to find strange things and started experiencing an overwhelming feeling that something sinister was stalking and watching us at a distance. It started with some brush that looked like it was broken and pushed aside by a very large animal. Definitely not a deer or elk. Then, we found a deer carcass, or what was left of it. Just a head and spine, and were so fresh, you could still see red in the meat. At this point, my brother had the rifle drawn and ready. And just then, our feelings of unease slowly turned into terror as the sound of footsteps became louder and louder and louder from the sounds of whatever was making them was now only 20 feet away from us and closing the distance very fast. My brother promptly responded by firing in the direction of the noise, which caused whatever this was to scream out violently and became more erratic with its steps, but not slow down. Now, it began to run in our direction, bipedally, and we can now see this creature that was behind all of this commotion. A huge, gaunt figure emerging from the bushes, running straight toward us. Had I not been in the woods with two other people, I would have thought that I was seeing things. Slowly, the creature came into my line of sight, and I was shocked to see that a giant wolf was running on its hind legs, just like a human was. Its head was that of a typical wolf, but its body was more like that of a distorted person, similar to what you see in werewolf movies. It howled in agony, nearly tumbling down as it charged toward us, with its howl almost sounding like the muffled, horrified, distorted screams of a man. While my friend and I paused in fear, my brother quickly reacted, firing off another round from his rifle. This caused this animal creature, thing, whatever you want to call it, to veer off course and run for cover into the trees, in the thicket opposite of us. Although he missed this time, it did seem to scare it away. I was scared and not really sure what to do, but managed to check the time seeing it, that it was 7 p.m. We instantly all agreed that it would be wise if we now left the area immediately, before this thing decided to come back and try its luck a second time, or worse, bring friends. We were intercepted by two rangers as we made a run for what we hoped was the exit. And although hunting season is a punishable offense, at least in the off-season, after seeing how shaken up we were, we were just escorted to the property gate, with only a warning. It must be karma, you all running into a predator out here. The one ranger remarked. What was it? We all looked at each other for a split second, and I said this. Just a bear. We came across a bear. I knew that none of us would want to open that can of worms by telling them what we really saw out there. Thank you for hearing my encounter. I've been a farmer for almost a decade now. I inherited a small patch of land from my parents that's roughly an hour to an hour and a half drive from St. Louis, Missouri. 
I hail from one of the first families to settle down in the entirety of the Missouri area and the land that I decided to call home and establish my roots here. It's been in our family for generations. It was a scenic outcrop of evergreen pastures that went on for miles in every direction. There was a rather large river on one end, not too far from the farmhouse, that provided water to my crops and livestock. And, east of my property, was a deep forest that was so big it went on to form part of the Mark Twain National Forest. It was this forest, as well as the occasional pest outbreaks and the drop in price of livestock that were my biggest headache on the farm. Although the forest wasn't an official border to my farm because, technically, I owned a large part of it, I would soon come to learn that it was best if I treated it as an official border for the east end of my property and basically never pass that border. I'll get into that here shortly, and you'll understand why. My farm is based in a pretty remote area that is ways off from any human activity. Actually, that was one of its biggest selling points to me, and one of the reasons why nobody else in the family had wanted it. In a way, I think my parents knew I'd appreciate the solitude and off-the-grid lifestyle it would provide me which is why they chose me to leave it to in the first place. You had to drive through a maze of dirt roads just to make it to the nearest road, and I honestly liked it that way. But four years into owning the land, I began to lose the occasional sheep to various wildlife that would venture out of the forest in search of food. This almost always happened at night when I was fast asleep. I never did witness what would kill my sheep directly, but I'd find tracks near the site of the kill that gave me a rather good idea of what it was. And with the tracks always being canine-like, I knew the local woods harbored some wolf packs. We even had a bear show up on the property at one point. Although it didn't cause any harm to the livestock, it seemed to be interested in looking around. I had seen it coming from a distance and was safely watching it from my kitchen window. But... Finally, it got bored and left, some two hours later. Since livestock farming was one of the main ways I made it income, the predators that ventured out of the forest onto my farm prompted me to build a secure enclosure for my sheep. And I also got a sheepdog to keep them safe when they were out grazing. After constructing a proper enclosure for my sheep and getting a sheepdog to keep an eye on them, the casualties all but stopped. Not the occasional forest animal didn't come wandering in every now and then, though. Now, I know I just said that the casualties all stopped. But, let me just say that that was only until April of 2012. This was around the time my sheepdog, named Jack, began to get really worked up, come dawn, every day. I would bring him inside with me after we had directed the sheep back into the enclosure around 5 p.m. daily. But for some strange reason, he'd go crazy, barking frantically towards the direction of the sheep's enclosure at nighttime. Having worked with animals even before I ever moved to the farm, I knew that my dog's panic was nothing to take light of. And one Thursday, he was so frantic that he even began hurling himself against the door. Also, the sheep were bleeding so loud I could hear them from inside the house. All of this prompted me to go and investigate what was really happening. So, it was around 10 p.m., and I reached for my shotgun heading towards the sheep's enclosure. Jack runs ahead of me and seemed to stop at a distance, growing ever more frantic. Little did I know, we were both about to encounter the most terrifying night of our lives. As I caught up to, and I came closer, a seven-foot silhouette greeted me, and what I saw was so ghastly and shocking that I froze in my tracks. Jack wasn't doing any better, and kept a safe distance from the creature, and barked at it like I'd never heard him bark before. The creature's shape resembled something you'd expect to see in a Bram Stoker novel, and had I not been so close to it as I was... 
I probably would have thought it was a very large bear. It had a face no different from one of the timber wolves that came to the farm. But that was about as far as similarities go. Its body, especially its torso, resembled that of a man. It had long human-like arms that almost went as far down to its ankles with hominid-like hands that ended in extremely large claws. Its face stared at us in grimace, and I couldn't tell if it was about to lunge at us or if it was making sure we did not come any closer. Just for the record, I had no intention of doing that. Its lower body, though, was more wolf-like, but what stood out the most is its bipedal gait, and the way it stood, it never deviated, not even once during our encounter, which made me realize that it must always use two legs and not four. I couldn't look away from it as it faced off with my dog, who was going absolutely berserk. The creature responded by making a blood-curdling sound that sounded more like a man moaning or crying or screaming. It's hard to say which. More human than any sound that a canine would ever produce. It stood there in a territorial standoff with my dog, neither one moving an inch, until eventually, Jack mustered up enough courage to advance toward it, calling its bluff and sending the creature bolting towards the woods. I couldn't believe he did that. Soon after, this creature ran off. I grabbed my phone and I called 911. Jack and I stood frozen in place and didn't even think to withdraw ourselves back to the house. We literally couldn't think. I waited for the cops from the nearest town to arrive, the pain of living rural. They came about an hour after the incident, so around 11 p.m. And they confirmed the encounter did happen, but they could not confirm what species of animal did it. They were able to confirm because they found a dead animal just outside the enclosure, and around it was a strange set of tracks. The tracks headed off into the woods exactly where we watched it run. I heard one officer whispering to another that these tracks looked strange since they were too big to be a wolf. And I also heard him say that it appeared that this creature walked off on two legs instead of four. I didn't sleep that night, and I haven't slept well since. Every time my dog barks in the early dawn hours, I think of this horrific encounter. It's definitely a trigger that brings me right back to that day. Unfortunately, it happens way more than I'd like it to, and I'm hoping that one day I'll get past it all. But for now, I'm just doing the best I can. Thanks for listening. I always loved Januaries, ever since I was a small child. It was one of the only times I ever got to spend with my father, who was away from home most of the year. He worked in the oil drilling operations in Alaska's North Slopes, which meant that I only got to see him for very short intervals all throughout the year, except for his yearly time off from mid-December all the way through February. I was extremely close with my father, and despite being a girl, we both shared a passion and love for the outdoors, especially fishing. In fact, most of his time off was spent in search of the ultimate fishing spot. He always looked for one that had an equal balance of sights to look at and fish to catch. During his break in 2009, he found a great fishing spot here in Alaska, which he claimed was as vast, if not bigger, than the town we were from. He said that the river split out into various channels over an area of land that stretched out for hundreds of miles. My mind was racing just thinking of all the different species of fish that such a large stretch of river would even possess. And now, I felt that all of our previous outings and fishing trips would pale in comparison to this one trip, for more reasons than just the fishing. It was also the first time that we would be going to Alaska for one of our fishing trips, and this trip, which was to the Kabuk River, gave us the perfect chance to learn about a new wilderness spot. 
even the drive to Alaska was scattered with awe-inspiring scenery. My father took the most scenic routes as he could find any mind wandered as I watched the majestic foothills and beautiful landscapes out the window. We had left our house with enough provisions for a whole week and also brought along our trusted kayak to enhance the fishing experience. Plus, it's always good to be familiar with their boat in order to have the best experience. We plan to follow the route taken by some of the Kobuk's earlier settlers. And the brochures we had with us promised a lot of fishing camps, hunting spots along the way. There was even the chance of finding an object of archaeological importance as we passed through the lesser used paths. The area was very difficult to reach at first, and I'm sure my father must have wished that we had come from a larger fishing party than just me. I was still young and really too small to be of any real assistance. We were saved when, along the way, we made it to the village of Ambler, where my father was able to leave behind our small kayak and rent a good-sized raft that we would use from that point onwards from our journey. A guide had warned us to be wary of the rapids and even gave us a map so we could know where we were approaching them. He also gave us a very stern warning to look out for bears for entering our campsite at night. Even though they were the target of hunts and usually avoided humans, you could never be sure. I also got the feeling he wanted to warn us to be on the lookout for something else, but held himself back at the very last minute. Little did I know then that he would soon get a good idea of what he was thinking of. We saw many sights along the way and came across several other hunting parties on the shore. Setting up their camps, of course. Light aircraft could be seen flying overhead, bringing people into the rivers, and we saw other rafting groups with people fishing. We arrived at Ambler on Friday and had spent a whole three days afloat along the many subrivers and tributaries of the Kobuk River when we spotted on the shoreline an area of open land with no hunting parties or any fishing companies on it. It was now midday, right around 3 p.m. It looked to be the perfect place to start a small fire and cook ourselves some lunch. The journey to this spot had been a tumultuous one with currents that had taken us a good distance from the shore. But, just as my father rode the raft towards the shore to land it, a large caribou came running at a great speed from out of the dense forest, just a couple of feet from the shore. It stops, paused at the foot of the river, just in front of us. But, as the trees kind of rattled behind it, it quickly plunged itself into the ice-cold waters and started swimming, straight towards our raft. We all look at each other, both thinking that we were watching something incredible and wondering what else was about to happen or come out of the forest. Now, besides the caribou, we were both curious to see what predator or hunter was chasing it and making it so scared as it starts to swim towards us. My father whispered that he was worried that it could either be a bear or maybe a hunter just indiscriminately firing in our direction, that he might be off in the trees. But neither showed up to the shore. Instead, to our horror, this massive wolf-like creature that was on two legs reared its grotesque face from the thick forest. As it entered the open land, it briefly stopped to search its surroundings, and it quickly spotted the caribou in the water. It made a blood-curdling howl that sounded like no animal I had ever heard before, almost having a human-like quality to it. The caribou's eyes were wide with fear, and we worried about where it might be heading, since it continued to head deeper into the water. The wolf creature then quickly ran towards the shore, only pausing as the water brushed up against its strangely shaped legs, howling as if in frustration that it could not reach this caribou which was clearly its prey because its long teeth hanging from its mouth, eager to bite into this thing. The wolf creature quickly ran towards the shore, only pausing as the water brushed up against it. We pushed ourselves deeper into the body of the river, 
hoping to catch a current to take us out of the area. We threw a quick glance over at the caribou, and it seemed to be thinking the same thing. The wolf dog creature was now starting to go into the water as well, and with a bit of quick thinking, I threw some of the fish we'd caught in its direction, hoping to catch its attention, maybe distract it. Luckily, this seemed to work. We were finally able to catch a current, and as we drifted away from this wolfman hybrid creature, it stopped its chase when one of the fish swam near it. We stayed drifting in a raft for hours until we came upon a large hunting party on the shores. We must have looked like a wreck as they happily invited us in amongst them. We were visibly shaken from the whole ordeal and explained what had happened. One member told us we had just been privy to the legendary dogman of Alaska. A dog-human hybrid that is supposedly said to roam the areas of this river. The areas most men don't dare go. He claimed it was good fortune to see it, but knowing how close we came to being face to face with this creature, with this predatory, calculating look in its eyes, we felt anything but lucky. For as long as I can remember, I have been a staunch supporter of the law. I had a strict upbringing and wasn't the type of person who allows for ambiguities, the kind that lay between the good and bad in society. It is probably no surprise to you then that I ended up in law enforcement, or at least an offshoot of it. I and a small team of others were the patrolmen of a local patch of woods that lay on the outskirts of Payson, Arizona. It wasn't my first choice of employment, I'll tell you that much, but it's a job that grew on me, and to be honest, I can't see myself doing anything else. I know it's a world away from inner city patrols, but if you've been on the job here long enough, you'll come to see things that no patrols in the city can provide you with. Every now and then, we would encounter something more than just your average trespassing teenagers, hanging out in the woods, smoking weed, having sex, or illegal loggers looking to make a quick buck. Sometimes, you'd even stumble across a bear, or a mountain lion, or even a scene that you'd only see on the National Geographic. Sometimes, you'd encounter something so extraordinary, there is no real-world reference to match it. This is what happened to me and my colleague during one of our routine assignments into the Tonto National Forest here in Arizona. The weeks leading up to the encounter were eventful, to say the least, with two colleagues of mine finding the site of illegal logging on one of each of their patrols. What was strange about it, though, was that the site had been abandoned before they found it, and before the loggers could complete their activities. Their campsite was still in pristine condition with two tents. Each had sleeping bags inside and provisions still inside of them. Outside lay the remains of a campfire with a fresh pot that assumingly held boiling water until the fire went out. There was even a chainsaw and an axe near at least half a dozen logs. A couple of feet from the campsite were also tire tracks whose skid marks seemed to indicate that the vehicle had left in a hurry. The only thing we figured out that could have caused these loggers to flee and leave everything behind in such a hurry was a predator or group of predators showing up at the campsite unexpectedly. Although, predators in the forest weren't something new. Predators this close to the edge of the forest were concerning, since this is where most of the hiking trails and visitors took place. So, naturally, this put us all on high alert, looking out for anything unusual during our patrols. We honestly had no clue what the predators might be, but... I had come across large droppings that did not match any of the local predators known to live in the forest. We made sure to pass the loggers' campsite at least once during our patrol rounds to see if they'd try to come back and collect their gear, but we never saw any sign of them. We had four teams of two people to patrol the park all throughout the year, with two teams patrolling that park in a week. But none of my fellow rangers had managed to even catch even a glimpse of these predators. That was until my partner and I went on a patrol. 
It was April 9th, a day like any other for me and my partner as we did our daily rounds. We had a patrol vehicle that we used in the areas of the forest that we could, but most of our day patrolling was spent on paths inaccessible by vehicles. Besides the occasional litter bug and hiker veering too far off the path, the day was turning out to be just like any other, until we encountered a group of young hikers scared half to death and mumbling on about werewolves or something, over to the east of where they came from. There were three of them, and they all reeked of weed. So we promptly sent them off in the direction and exited and chalked their claims of werewolves down to a wolf sighting exuberated by their choice of recreation. For the first time in weeks, we had hopes of finally catching the predators that had been terrorizing our park's visitors, especially now that we had just heard this account of wolves. As soon as we could identify the predator's location, we would be able to figure out a way to deal with them. So, we headed east, in the direction the hikers had come. It was around 7 p.m., and the night was coming. This, coupled with the trees, was making it hard to see anything in the forest, but we always had a flashlight on us. That was standard procedure, so we clicked in on it and used it. My partner held the flashlight and shined it ahead of us on the path, so I walked ahead, following its light, when suddenly, in the shadows in front of me, just beyond the reach of the flashlight, I caught a glimpse of a wolf munching something. I guess it was food that the hikers left behind, but in this case, the wolf was three times the size of any wolf I had seen. As soon as the light hit the line of sight, it paused and raised itself up, slowly turning towards them. This is where things get weird as its body was disproportionately positioned for a wolf. Instead, it almost resembled the body of a man. This creature was frantic. You could tell that it didn't think it would be seen. And you could see its eyes that it seemed smart. The closer they got, the more territorial it became, growling as though it thought they were able to take its meal or something. It stared at us with piercing, glowing eyes that shine out from a head full of dark fur. Matted fur that definitely showed us this creature had been living out here for a while. While I stood there, frozen and hesitating to go any further, my partner quickly drew her service pistol, firing a shot into the air. The sound was deafening, and you could tell that, whatever this creature was, it was bothered. Disorientating it, and making me angry. Then... She fired off a second shot that sent it running away, kind of angrily. We searched the area afterwards for signs of more dog creatures, secretly hoping we wouldn't find anything. But, indeed, we found several other prints. So, we're not really sure. Similar, but smaller ones than belonging to the creature that we saw. However, as for the creatures themselves, we found nothing. When it came time for an official report on the incident, that we filled out all the paperwork exactly as we experienced it, except for one critical point. We left out calling it a dog man for obvious reasons, replacing the words with wolves. We knew that our jobs would have been in jeopardy, and maybe even our sanity questioned. We just felt it best to not shake anything up. Nothing, meaning no creature with this description was ever seen again by us or the other patrols unless they also saw it, but chose to keep the story to themselves, just like us. However, to date, every now and then, hikers and hunters would venture too deep into the woods, and we'd often hear stories about them rushing out with terror in their eyes, screaming and yelling that they'd seen this creature. Some of them even reported it exactly as it sounded, like a dogman. My now patrol partner and I never told anybody that we actually believed them. We just went through the motions and followed all of our training, telling them that what they had seen was perfectly normal and natural in the woods, and that in their surprise, their minds made it out to be more than it was. We knew they were in their right to be scared, but we still kept our encounter and our secret to ourselves. It was late March 2007 when I saw it. You probably wouldn't believe me if I told you. It's just that. I've got to share it with somebody.
anybody. I figured maybe if more people knew about it, well, maybe someday, there might be some real answers. That's got to count for something. It might one day even save some lives. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll collect each other's encounters. Anyway, here it goes. I was just a kid when this happened. We were in the middle of soccer practice. It was a late, sunny afternoon, but nothing too blinding. This was back when I was still dreaming of going to Berkeley. One of my teammates kicked the ball really hard. I started forward, but the ball sailed straight over my head, out of the soccer park, and across the street into a cluster of tightly woven trees. It was weird that it would land there because most of the land around the park was grassy and open, but I dismissed it and glanced from side to side in case of any incoming traffic. The streets surrounding the park were usually over busy, but I watched as one car, a common sedan in navy blue, passed by me. Everybody was impatient for me to get the ball, but I shrugged it off and crossed the street. I could see the mountains to my right, and as I jogged across the hot pavement, that's when I saw it. My teammates were much too far away to see anything. Right behind the ball, something was moving. Something big. I honestly thought it was a stray dog at first. I mean, anybody would if they'd seen it too. The dark, fluffy head of a rust-colored fur could easily belong to a Malamute, or even a long-haired German Shepherd. It could have even been a cross of the two. I suppose. I watched as the canine's nose wrinkled up and down, taking in each of the scents of the soccer ball. I watched in fascination and terror as it continued to lean closer. Since I like dogs, I stupidly called over to it, thinking it was maybe friendly. The thing, and I say thing because I realized shortly it was not a dog, glanced up at me and began to stand on its hind legs. I remember the impossibly long shadow as it fell over me. This thing, or dog, or whatever you want to call it, it must have easily been twice my size. Whatever its true height was, I was scared, and I'm not exactly the type that scares easily. Yet in that moment, I could feel the blood drain from my skin as this dreaded creature stared me down with its soul-piercing gaze. The yellow eyes were like burning embers of something. Something almost human staring straight through me, like it was judging or not whether to let me go. I couldn't pry myself away, and its, its gaze was absolutely mesmerizing. There was a dangerous sort of intelligence reflecting back from deep within its eyes. Something far older and much more mysterious than its furry predecessors. I stayed where I was for what seemed like a long time. There really wasn't anywhere else I can go, to be honest. I wasn't sure how fast this thing could run, but I was willing to bet that it was a lot faster than me, and I was in good shape. But with legs like that, there was no way I would even stand a chance. His stride had to have been more than likely two or three times wider than mine. I could imagine him closing the gap between us in a mere heartbeat. This creature let out a low guttural growl. It rumbled out in a curious warning, but didn't sound anything like a dog should have sounded. It was almost like there were two different vocal cords. Whatever it was definitely did not hit like me. That was fine with me. I didn't like it much either, even if it was a him. I couldn't tell because there was a shadow between it. I bravely reached out with my trembling arm and grabbed the ball. Using one of its massive clawed paws with nails that could have easily rivaled that of Confucius in length. If Confucius had ever been a dog like beast, the creature suddenly swung back in the woods. I quickly grabbed the ball and made a dash for it. As I moved, this thing was making a trembling noise in the woods, smashing around the trees and kind of emitting a low growl. To my great surprise, it seemed to disappear very shortly. I was terrified beyond my wits, and I scanned the horizon for any sign of life. But there was none. My teammates back over were shouting loudly, yet I paid no attention to them. I was astonished at what I'd seen. Eventually, 
I gave up on the hope that I might one day see this thing again. Whatever it was. Long gone. I hurried and took the soccer ball back to my teammates where I then shared my story with them. They all thought I was nuts. I kind of thought I had lost it there too for a moment. And I never did see that thing again, though I went back many times to the same field. Maybe it was just passing through. Anyway, after that, I believe anything's possible. Though I think the real question is, what do you think? What animal did I see? Last July, I went camping with some friends. Sam and Evan, I'd actually seen recently. But Elizabeth was coming too, and I hadn't seen her since she moved to Alaska. I was excited to see everybody and just hang out by the tent with some beer and cook some good food on the fire. Sure enough, as soon as we got there and set up tent, cracked open the beer and started playing drinking games. First, we played King's Cup, and then Never Have I Ever. You know, the basics. As it got darker we turned on an old lantern that Evan had brought. We only really had the light of the lantern, the stars, the fire, and the full moon, and occasionally our phones, lighting us up as we laughed and drank and hung out. Then, as the moon began to come out, we began hearing a faint howling noise. Off in the distance, we couldn't make out what it was. Well, I admit, I was definitely a bit scared, being a city boy who's never seen a wolf in person, I was intrigued enough, or maybe I should say tipsy enough. It was hard to hide my excitement, though, at hearing real nature howls. I thought it would be funny. I tried to howl back, but my friends stopped me. Living in Alaska these past few months, she was much more in tune with the dangers of wildlife in a way I didn't know as a city boy. And somebody whose only interactions with nature were through things like National Geographic. Maybe because they were intrigued also. Or maybe, just to mess with Elizabeth, Sam and Evan joined in on the howling too. And soon, I followed suit. Eventually, we began getting sleepy and ran out of ideas for drinking games. So, we decided to crash. Sam and Evan were now staying in one tent, and Elizabeth and I were staying in another. Nothing was happening between us, it's just the way the sleeping arrangement worked out. I gave her privacy while she changed and I felt the urge to go and use the bathroom. I was going to go use the public bathroom in the middle of the campground. You know, the kind with spider webs the size of your head in every corner and dirt all over the sink which makes you wonder if you're even dirtier after washing your hands. It was for that very reason, as well as the beautiful night that I decided instead to go over by the river. The moonlight reminded me of a painting, and I chuckled to myself, imagining Bob Ross painting happy little trees along the mountain. I unzipped, went about my business, and enjoyed the fresh, cool evening air on my face, cooling me down from that flush of alcohol. I'm about to finish up when I see movement on the other side of the river. I squint my eyes to see a little bit more clearly, thinking it's probably a deer or something, and hoping it was just a moose since I've always wanted to see one but never had the chance. Well, whatever it was, was definitely big enough to be a moose. As the figure comes close to the bank of the river, I noticed it definitely wasn't a moose. For a second, I thought it was a doe or a big dog until I realized it was neither of those. It was a giant wolf, and when I say giant... I mean, absolutely monstrous. I was definitely freaking out a little bit. But I think I had enough alcohol in me that the fear was muted and the curiosity was heightened. I stepped closer to the river, trying to get an even better look at the thing. It was occasionally glancing over at me, but it was mainly just standing there. I took one more step closer, and boom. I slipped on a mossy rock, landing right on my butt. I get up and see that this wolf is now staring right at me. I'm not sure if I scared it, or if it was just curious. But then, that's when it happened. The wolf, what I thought was a giant gray wolf, then stood up on its hind legs. My first thought 
was that maybe it was doing what my cat does when she wants a treat or she's curious, which is to stand up on their hind legs to get a better look. But upon regaining my composure and looking closely at what I thought was a wolf, now fully illuminated by the moonlight, I realized it wasn't just balancing itself on its hind paws. It wasn't just propped up to get a better view. It didn't have paws. It had feet. Feet with large claws coming out of them. And it didn't have front paws either, but what appeared to be raccoon-like human hands. And they also had claws. And it had the face of a giant wolf, and it was now snarling at me. And that's when the scariest thing ever happened in my life. This creature, which... After the extensive googling once I got home that I'm sure was a dogman took a step towards me bipedally on two legs like a man and then another and another and another deliberate well-balanced steps like it was used to walking on two legs normally steps that any animal should not be used to I was terrified frozen with fear every nerve in my body was on fire screaming at me to get out of there Every step this thing took sent me deeper and deeper into this fear-driven paralysis. My heart was now beating so hard it was like thunder, and I'm sweating bullets. I'm sure this thing was going to do God knows what. Eat me, maul me, tear me in pieces. And then luckily, it looked up, kind of looked around, and then looked off to the left, as if it knew something. Looked back at me and disappeared back into the tree line. For a moment, I stay there, nearly hyperventilating, just trying to breathe deeply to stop my heart from collapsing in on itself. And after a few minutes, I got the shakes, but luckily, I was able to regain movement. And I now slowly backed away from the river, got into my tent, where my friend Elizabeth was out. Out cold. Surprisingly, I somehow managed to sleep. It was a pretty restless sleep, of course, and I was in such shock that I forgot to change my pants. The next day, I told my friends what I saw, but they all just laughed at me and told me, yeah, dude, you were too drunk. You need to lay down. But I know what I saw. I haven't been hiking since because if creatures like that live out in the mountains, I'd rather stay away. But I've been reading up on dogmen, and everything people talk about rings true with my own experience. I never believed in so-called cryptids before, but ever since I went camping with my friends that day, I'm now a believer. This was years ago, back when me and a group of close friends were all about 17 to 19. Some of us drove and others did not. To add some quick background, I've never experienced something like this before, and typically, did not believe in the paranormal. I haven't experienced anything strange in the woods since, and I've continued to hunt and track and spend time outdoors. I have no explanation for the events that would occur on this night. On an August evening, a group of friends and I were sleeping in a small cabin out in the woods. The cabin was very old and run down, but was the only shelter from the weather. The cabin was actually owned by my best friend's father who had the place for years and years, but was too lazy to do the proper upkeeping on it. Sure, it did the job, but it desperately needed some much love and TLC. The night started out like any other. We were sitting around the fire and telling stories. I can still remember the feeling of the fire. It was so warm and comforting. I thought nothing of it at the time, though. Anyway, we all go inside shortly thereafter, and around 9 p.m., the group of us went to bed. We were due to go scouting for good spots for deer stands the next day, and really wanted to get a good night of sleep. We were all very tired, so nobody was alarmed at the fact that we all went to sleep at the same time. After all, the drive up here was three hours, and I'm sure you know just how taxing long car rides can be mentally. Then. We didn't sleep so peacefully after that. One hour later, something had happened. I was awoken by a loud thud coming from the kitchen, followed by a scream. I immediately jumped from my bed and ran toward the kitchen. 
The rest of the group did the same as we were all awakened and terrified as what was now happening. Whatever this was. My best friend and his father were in the kitchen and both of them looked like they were terrified, staring wildly out the door. Sometimes, my friend's father would drop early in the morning and crash out in the main room, so it wasn't a surprise to see him here. We all asked both of them what was wrong and why they were screaming. Soon after, I heard, no, we heard the sound of something coming from the roof. All of us in unison turn our attention to the roof and we can hear something very large walking across the cabin roof. Then, it, whatever it was, let out this terrifying screech. And I remember the exact sound as it was like a howl screeching, only ten times louder. The screech was so loud and piercing, it hurt my ears, and I remember I had to cover them with my hands because it was painstaking. The screech was also very deep in pitch and sounded like you took an owl and were choking the life out of it to get that noise. It was horrible. I can remember just looking at my friends and my friend's father, and we all had the same face of terror. Somebody says, what the hell is that? While somebody else asked, is that a Bigfoot? Then, the screeching stopped and we heard this loud thud, dropping from the roof, hitting the ground on the side of the cabin. It sounded like whatever weighed about 500 pounds dropped to the ground. It was heavy. But the screech continued on for another minute. And then it was silent. I remember having to force myself to leave the safety of the kitchen and walk out into the main foyer. I remember the cold and the moonlight shining in through the windows of the cabin. I remember the cold feeling in my body. Picture this. Be inside the middle of a horror movie, and just try to imagine how that feels. I think I could speak for all of us when we were overcome with dread and fear. After it went completely silent, my friend's dad opens the front door and shines his light out to look, and you could hear the night outside was so quiet. There was no crickets, no noise, no nothing. And keep in mind, this was in late summer. The forest is usually pretty alive at night. Crickets and sounds of nightlife. It was incredibly eerie and we all had this lingering feeling like something really bad was going to happen. One of our friends, maybe in a moment of craziness or what suggested we all go outside together to find the source of that noise. And when I think most of us screamed at him, are you crazy? I mean, even my friend's dad had a very concerned look on his face. He kept pacing back and forth, just saying, This isn't good. No, 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 th this isn't good. Trying his best to keep us calm and in the cabin. He told us we all need to wait it out until morning, and we're going to have to cancel our hunting trip. Or our deer stand hunting trip, I should say. I don't know if he was more scared than we were, but his reaction was to force us to stay in the cabin until morning light. One of the friends in the group maybe the craziest of all of us, decided that he was going to bravely go outside and look around in the dark to try and find the source of that noise. Apparently, he was convinced that this was nonsense and he was going to prove it. He had one of those high lumen flashlights. I tried. We all tried. We begged him not to go, but he was having none of it. So he frantically runs out the cabin like a madman thinking he's going to be the Indiana Jones and be a hero and prove to us that it was nothing. Well, less than five minutes, he comes running back in the cabin, slamming the door shut, and he's screaming and pale as a ghost. He keeps saying really fast, there's something outside, it's so big, and it, it's walking around, I saw it. And he's pale, more pale than you'll ever get if you're sick. My friend's dad tried to comfort him to the best of his ability and redirect him to one of the small rooms in the cabin to try and further calm him down. We just kept the door locked that night and did our best to sleep, while others thought it would be best to stay up and keep watch. The rest of the night wasn't as eventful, but me, among a couple others who decided to stay up, 
kept hearing something really big walking around the cabin out in the dark. We were all too terrified to even dare shine our flashlights out there at whatever it was walking around. It honestly reminded me of the film Jeepers Creepers, honestly. It crept me out. I have no idea how many other friends even managed to get any sleep, but somehow they pulled it off. My friend's dad was among us who stayed up all night and was with me to help keep watch and make sure that we were all safe. Now, as soon as about 5 a.m. hits and it was light enough, we all promptly grab our stuff and without much conversation at all, loaded up our car and off we went. We also woke the ones who were asleep, so don't worry, we didn't leave them behind, but we didn't want to waste any unnecessary time in that cabin more than we had to. This is where things get creepy, as if they aren't already. My friend's dad drove back in his car, and we drove and followed him. He told us that he would meet us all back at their house, since that's where we all met up the day before to load up and go. The three hours plus back seemed like a blur of time. Thoughts of the previous night would not stop replaying in my mind. We get back to the house, begin unloading our stuff, getting ready to go into our separate vehicles, and so I start asking my friend's dad what he thinks it was. Was it a cougar? A Bigfoot? I mean, honestly, what did we experience last night? He seemed very hesitant to talk about it, but after some more prying, I got him to open up. He began telling us how he's ran into it before and he knows what it is. Then he asks us a very serious question. More serious than I have ever seen him in my life. Have you guys ever heard of a Wendigo? We had not. He explained to us further that it's some cannibalistic spirit that has taken the physical form and will stalk you if it finds you. One time, about four or five years ago, he was hunting up by the cabin, and he felt like he ventured a little too far to the west, where this thing's territory must have been, and claims that it followed him back to the same cabin where we were staying. It's like it had our scent and was waiting for us to come back to that cabin to show ourselves. Even just typing this out gives me the creeps. I can't stop reliving it. I'm not sure why it never tried to get into the cabin, but who knows? Maybe it would have stayed longer. Maybe it was looking for weak points. We're not sure. Who knows? Maybe is all I could ever ask. Anyway, believe me or not, that's what I experienced. It happened in May of 2008. I was camping in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta with my family and friends. There were about 20 of us in total in a place called Banff National Park. We were driven out of our campsite by some sort of animal. We suspect a bear and we ended up in a place called Johnston Canyon. This was in the middle of the night and there was a windstorm going on. The wind was howling and it was raining although lightly. There was some thunder and lightning on in the background, but not too much. My friend and I were sharing a tent, and at about 3 o'clock in the morning, we hear a noise that sounded like something walking around outside the tent. My friend told me to turn on my headlamp, so I did. I shone the light out of the tent, and I saw something moving around with the corner of my eye. I quickly turned my headlamp on it, and it startled and scared the living daylights out of me. It, whatever it was, was about eight feet tall, covered from head to toe in long, black, matted, nasty hair. It had these hollow, empty eyes that kind of glowed a dull yellow, and they illuminated from the light of the handland. It was staring at me. I tried to scream, but this thing was so ugly. It had a face that stuck out like a deer or maybe a dog, and even kind of had small little horns protruding on top of its head. Not like full-blown antlers, like a 8 or 9 or 10 rack deer would have, but this was more like little horns that you'd see a male buck having, like a little one. The face resembles more of a rotting skull with bits of tissue falling off it. I wouldn't notice though until afterwards, but 
this horrible odor of rotting meat lingered around our campsite for hours after the event. Once I shined my light into its face, it quickly lifted up its arm as if to shield its face from any kind of light, and kind of faded off into the obscurity of the darkness of the night. Either that, or I turned away out of sheer terror and began screaming. My friend and I both saw it, and my behavior woke up pretty much everybody else. And so they're screaming at me through their tents, what's going on? What did you see? What's wrong? I told them right then and there, guys, there's something walking around our campsite that isn't an animal, and it's not human. I don't know what it was, but it scared me badly. After this, the rain came down pretty heavily. And so now, we all just stayed put in our tents. Many of us went back to sleep, but my friend decided that we should try and stay up. Maybe keep an eye out in case this thing comes back. I did not have a weapon on me. I know, stupid, right? But my friend kept a Colt 45 with him at all times. He was always and still is a firm believer that if you're going to be hiking or out in the wilderness, you need to carry a powerful weapon in case you run into a dangerous situation and desperately need it. It seemed like after that thing left, the rain and storm intensified, as if its mere presence angered the storm. At some point in the morning, I passed out from sheer exhaustion and woke up sometime in the early AM. I think I was the first one up, and so I woke everybody, explaining we need to move now and not stick around in case whatever that thing was decides to come back. I'm glad my friends stuck up for me and convinced my family and friends that I saw something, and that it's also verifiable and was not just a mistaken identity. They were convinced I saw something, although not sure what. We loaded up, packed out of there as quickly as we could. Now, moving forward in time, a little bit, I kind of forgot about the whole event, until months later. This same family friend and I are sitting down over a beer, and he brings up the time we saw that thing camping. I immediately remembered and had flashbacks to it. It scared me to even think about it. He explained to me, yeah, I tried to do some research on what I think we saw. I'm pretty sure it's no Bigfoot. Did not look or act like one. It had to have been a Wendigo. To further tie things in, I recently found your channel and was reminded of this event again by the same friend telling me I should reach out to you for verification. Is this a Wendigo we saw or something else? Me and my brother were hunting back in the foothills of Ohio when we found ourselves in a rather large, small cave. Driven by curiosity, we were no seasoned spelunkers, nor did we have the proper equipment to safely explore deeper. But we didn't care. We were young, on a thrill ride mission. So let me explain to you how the cave looked. We were on a steep incline down a bunch of rocks down to this cave opening, which was very large, but kind of bled into a smaller tunnel, which is why I say it was a small, large cave. It had a strange smell emanating from the cave. And the further down we got, the more terror we could sense. As we neared the bottom of this steep incline, my brother points to me and says, look at this. And to my horror, all along the bottom, where there were no rocks and it was flat, there were dead birds, like everywhere, all in varying states of decay, some freshly dead, some completely rotted and skeletal, while others were in the process somewhere in between of rotting. You can just imagine the smell was just lovely. As we're trying to put together the pieces, why are there so many dead birds down here? It doesn't look like anything killed them. It looks like they just fell out of the sky and died here. We get this really bad feeling, like something is watching us from inside this cave. We should not continue onward. So we immediately turn around and start making our way back up. And as we do, the feeling does not lessen. It gets stronger and stronger. And so now we're moving faster and faster. And we get up the incline and we don't dare look back 
until we get well out of the opening or the mouth of the cave. We get back up to the top of this incline, and we both sense something dangerous is down there. We can both know it, we both feel it, and we're spooked. We're experienced outdoorsmen and woodsmen, so we know our way around. We're not amateurs, but we felt and know something was watching us. We should have never went down there. We turn around to look back into the cave, and as we do, this enormous hulking shadow appears in the opening. We both say to each other at the same time, what the hell is that? As we watched in amazement, this humanoid shadow seemed to stretch and grow, its arms and head reaching out. Then it stops. It stands still at the opening, its body still hidden in the darkness. It's completely motionless and silent. We feel its body watching us. Then it starts to make a sound. It's a haunting, long, deep howl. It's guttural and coarse, and it carries deep into the air. It's a low moaning growl like a wild animal would make, and it gets louder and louder until it's louder than our own voices, just like we were talking. It's so loud now that it's echoing off the mountainside, balancing across the hills. It's the most terrifying howl I've ever heard. It's like a wailing howl of pure desperation and hunger. There's something about it that's just so compelling and so very wrong. I can't even begin to describe how it sounded. It's something you have to hear for yourself. As it's echoing out this horrendous howl, me and my brother don't need any more time to decide that we need to get as far away from here as humanly possible. Let's just say we cut our day short and we still talk about that day even now. It was hands down the scariest thing I've ever dealt with while in the thick of the woods. This was just last summer, in 2020. One summer night, my friend and I are sitting around a bonfire with other friends and noticed a strange, pale, and gaunt figure staring at us through the trees beyond. We didn't think much of it, as it looked somewhat human. We assumed it was some kid or young adult who perhaps had been drinking and stumbled into our campground. We ignored the figure for a while, but it kept staring at us. It was not particularly tall, but was very thin. It was wearing what appeared to be a torn dark brown robe, and it had pale white skin with very long, dirty, straining black hair hanging from its face. It had no facial features that we could see at the distance. At least, that may not stand out as alarming, as I'm probably making it sound. But that was at first. After a while, the figure disappeared from the trees, and my friend and I, since we were the closest to the wood line, could hear something moving quickly in the woods coming in our direction. This made us both incredibly uneasy, as it would anybody. Quick note, this is where I have to insert a disclaimer that I'm not suggesting that what I saw was a Wendigo in fact. Also, I'm not trying to make a mockery of the idea of the Wendigo either. I merely want to share my own experience. I realize there's a lot of controversy surrounding the idea of Wendigos. If you don't believe in them, that's perfectly fine. I'm not trying to change anyone's mind. Just share my story and be done with it. I have to tell you, this is the point in the story where I begin to question my own sanity. The next thing we knew, we can hear it behind us. And we both turn, and all of us around the bonfire now see this thing in full. The figure had appeared and... It was now very tall, at least eight feet. Its hair was longer than we thought, very long, and it had very sunken in features, emaciated and sickly looking. It clearly was not human, at least any that I'd ever seen, and it just stood there at the tree line, observing, watching. Several of us began screaming, running back towards the camp, while the others of us were downright frozen where we were standing. I do not know what my friend and I were doing. We were stuck in a state of perpetual shock. I remember turning and running, being so afraid that I was going to fall and this thing was going to grab me. I did not see or feel anyone behind me, but I only made it as far as the fire pit, and I stopped and turned to see what it was doing. It, to my horror, had begun running towards me and was now very much taller and larger than I ever thought. 
It had singled me out and was charging me. I remember looking up at it when it was no more than a few feet away. And in that exact moment, it looked at me with these lifeless eyes. And somehow, I don't know, like some sort of paranormal phenomenon, its face had contorted and changed. It had no face. It was just a black void with eyes. I can't even begin to explain. I screamed and fell to the ground. I think my friend was screaming too, but it's a blur, to be honest. I don't remember. The next thing I do remember, I was sitting on the ground looking at my own hands covered in dirt and blood. When I look up, I was surprised to see my friend next to me. And he's looking around like crazy, trying to get me to go now before this thing comes back. I think I must have blacked out for a moment or two because it's like my brain just lapsed that moment of time completely out of my memory. Just like a voided check. We were all 15 or 16 at the time, so we make it back to camp. Everybody's freaking out, crying, telling our parents what we had seen. They listened and tried their best calming everybody down and trying to prove there's nothing spooky out in the woods. We have no reason to fear and probably just saw a deer. But I tried convincing them, or at least I tried, that there was something there. We all saw it, and there's no denying that. They weren't really buying it, so I just gave up after a while and kept it to myself. I know it might sound very strange, and I want you to bear with me through these feelings, but I strongly feel that whatever I saw that night somehow attached itself to me, or marked me in some way. I don't know how to explain or describe my feelings. It's like it marked me. I feel different. Not just about my sighting, but I physically feel different. Like this thing is a part of me now. I haven't felt right ever since this happened, and I don't know who I can talk to about it, to be honest. My parents and family don't want to hear about it. And my friends listen to me, but there's not much they can do. Understandably so. What do you think happened? Can you provide me with some answers? Thank you. This encounter happened in the summer of 2011. I was on a cross-country road trip with my mother and brother. We had just crossed the border into Michigan from Wisconsin. It was about 11 p.m. We were running behind schedule and decided to stop at a rest area about two miles before we reached the town of Salt St. Marie, Michigan. We pulled into the rest area and parked in the corner away from the other cars. It was an extremely hot night and we all went for a walk. We walked down a path through the woods and onto a small wooden bridge that crossed a creek. We stopped to look at the water. Then, we turned around and walked back to the parking lot. We walked up to the parking lot and I quickly realized that I had forgotten to grab my brother's cigarettes. I told my mom that I was going to go run down to the bridge and grab them, since he accidentally forgot them and lost them. So she and my brother walked around to the front of the car, and I walked back to the bridge. I grabbed the cigarettes, then I walked back towards the car, because we were getting ready to leave. About halfway between me getting the car and the rest area. I noticed something running across the road, about 50 feet away from me. It was big, and it was running fast. I was in the middle of the parking lot, and I stop, and I look at this thing. It stopped in the middle of the road, turned to look at me. I stopped walking and stood there. I was facing a creature, about 7 feet tall, covered in long shaggy hair. Its front legs were longer than its hind legs, and it stood kind of hunched over. Its face looked like a dog's face with long pointy ears. Its head was very long and thin, and it had a very long snout. The mouth was open, and I could see that it had long, sharp teeth. Its eyes emitted this dull yellow glow, and they seemed transfixed on me. I was frozen in place. It didn't move for a few seconds. Then, it took off running across the parking lot, towards some buildings in the woods. When it ran, it moved down to all fours, and it ran very fast. I saw it run off the edge of the parking lot. 
I never moved. I stood there for a few moments trying to comprehend what I had just seen. I walked back to the car and my mother was standing by the driver's side door and she asked why it took so long. I told her that I had forgotten my brother's cigarettes. She looked at me a little weird and asked if I was okay. I had told her the first time before I had even left to go to the bridge, but I assumed she didn't hear me. And I told her I was fine. We got in the car and left the rest area. When we drove through town the next morning, we stopped at a coffee shop and we were talking about the local legend of the dog man that's supposedly all over Michigan. Well, my mom tells me that she had apparently seen one before. She said when she was younger, she was driving down the road with my brother and they were laughing about urban legends and myths. She looks over at the road and saw a tall hunched figure walking in the middle. It was walking on all fours and it was covered in a thick brown fur, she said. She claims it wasn't a bear and it was not a person in a costume. She tells me that it looked like a huge dog. I didn't believe her at first, but I mean, I guess it made sense. I never heard of the dogman until now and I guess I just didn't comprehend it. I mean, yeah, with everything going on, the sighting was really creepy to me though. And at the time, I didn't quite fully understand it. Looking back, it's been years since then. I still think about it a lot. I have a lot of questions I don't know about. And I don't know if it was the same creature as my sighting or not. What my mom saw. I saw something that night, but I don't quite know what it was. I know it was not a bear, and it was not a man. I've seen a lot of animals in my life, but I've never seen anything like this and I have never really told anybody about my story, at least until now. I'll reiterate this again. I can't stand here and say for certain it was a dogman. All I know is what I saw, and I've never seen it before. I'm posting this because I can't find anything else like it, and I'm hoping somebody else has seen something similar. The date was November 14th, 2012. I was driving home from a party. It was about 2.30 a.m. The moon was bright and the stars were out. I was lost in thought, thinking about the next day, which was a big day for me. Currently, I was in a suburb of Toronto and approaching city limits. I had just passed a sign for a junior college that I wanted to attend in the fall. I was planning on going to the school to get information on the program but I had never gotten around to it. I was hoping the school was still open late, at least the visitor center, so I could stop by and get more information. I know, I understand that's kind of a weird route, but whatever. I was driving on the road that ran through a residential area and all the houses around me were very dark, including mine. The street lights were on, but no one was outside. The area though was very eerily peaceful. Suddenly, I heard a loud thump coming from behind me, but it was just a single loud thump. It sounded like something hit the back of my car. I thought maybe an animal had jumped out. I checked my rearview mirror, but I didn't see anything. I kept driving. I thought it might have been a dog that had maybe jumped out in front of my car, but whatever, I don't know. I hear the sound again, and this time, it was a loud banging on the back of my car, and it was accompanied by what sounded like snarling and growling. So I look in my rearview mirror, still nothing. I continue driving, and I come to a stop sign at the end of the road. I stopped, and suddenly, I felt weight jump onto the trunk of my car. So for the third time, I look in my rearview mirror, and I see a dog, a huge dog, I didn't know exactly what it was. I shouted and this dog, or what I thought was a dog, jumps onto the back of my car and appeared to be holding onto my vehicle with two human-like hands. Well, they reminded me more of like raccoon hands. It was using its hands and arms to hold onto the back of my vehicle. I could see the arms and hands gripping tightly and pushing down on the trunk of my car. I slammed on the gas and sped down the street. I was terrified. 
I didn't know what this thing was. I just knew that it was big. The arms were covered in thick hair and the hands had these long claws at the end. This animal, or whatever it was, holding on for dear life here, and I'm swerving trying to get this thing to let go. I keep looking back in my rearview mirror into the face of this thing and it's ugly. Really scary looking, honestly. I got to the end of the street and the thing let go. So I slammed on the brakes. I had no idea what was going on, but I did not want that thing getting in my car. It let go, bolts off, and jumps out, letting a terrible screaming noise. I could hear it running off into the distance, into the darkness of the night, and I did not see exactly where it went. I heard it jumping over stuff, causing a ruckus. The next day, I ended up telling my girlfriend about the encounter, but she said she didn't believe me. She said it was probably a large dog or who knows. Last I checked though, dogs don't do what this thing did. I was driving through a wooded area in the night and I saw a dog-like thing walking on the side of the road. I slowed the car down and tried to get a look at it. It was a black dog standing on its hind legs and it looked really weird. I thought it was a bear at first, but it was way too big and too strangely shaped to be a dog or a bear. Then, it stands up on its hind legs and casually walks off into the trees. I looked at it more closely, and it was definitely some type of canid creature. I had my phone in my hand, so I tried recording it. I was shaking like a leaf, so I couldn't really get the best footage. I tried following it into the forest, and it turned around and looked at me. I was freaking out by this point, and I lost it. The last thing I saw was it running away into the forest, and all I could think of was this thing jumping out of the trees at me, like it was going to charge at me. I was so scared. I had never seen a dog like this before, and I pray to God I never see one again. I tried to do some internet research about it. I guess it's a thing called the Ozark Howler. I guess they're pretty common creatures here down in the south, but I never imagined in my life I would see one like this. I should also add that when I say I followed it, I didn't actually get out of my car. I pulled over on the side of the road to see if I could shine my light, to see where and if it was, to try and get its position. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Although, I felt a lot more curiosity and shock at the mere sight of this thing rather than fear and dread. This was truly an experience I don't plan on forgetting. For the first time, I'm going to be telling the story of my own personal encounter with a creature known as the Michigan Dogman. It took place back in the summer of 2015 in the small community of St. Louis, Michigan. I was living with a close friend at the time, and I decided to go out to the local gas station at night to look for UFOs. And my friend, we will call him Jack, was not interested in going. He was far too busy watching TV and drinking beer. So I decided to go out anyway. After about an hour or so of sitting in my car out in the middle of nowhere, hoping I would see some forms of life in the sky, I gave up. I decided it was time to go home. I was a bit freaked out though for some reason. It was just this feeling I can't explain. I started the car and began driving home. I was on a long, lonely dirt road that connects with a bigger one. That's what you get for taking night roads, huh? Suddenly, I noticed something running across the road in front of me. I slowed down a bit, and my headlights illuminated something. I was scared at first, but then I realized what it was. It was a dog, or what appeared to be sticking out of the trees. Then. As I saw it more clearly, that's when I began to tense up. What I was looking at wasn't just a dog. This thing had the head of a dog, but it looked more like a cross between a wolf and a German Shepherd. It had a body similar to a dog, but was very lean and slender. And the scariest part of all, it was walking like a human, 
bipedally. I slam on the brakes, and then I notice that this thing was not alone. There was about six or seven of them, all coming out of the trees. It was then that I noticed that they were all larger than the first one I saw. Much larger. That means the one I saw was probably a juvenile. These things were massive and built huge. They all had a mixture of long slender legs and long snouts, and all had these glowy orange-yellow-red eyes, mixes of smoky gray to brown and black. These were huge animals. I was terrified by the sight. I didn't know what to do. They all just stood there staring at me for a few seconds, like a deer in the headlights, unsure as how to handle a person like me seeing that they exist. It was as if I had interrupted them doing something, or while they were on a mission to go somewhere and do something. So I slowly put the car in reverse, but now they're on the road, and I kind of just kept reversing and kept reversing. The last I saw of them was them looking back at me as they decided to, at the last minute, run off into the woods. I was pretty scared. I didn't want to go home, so I went to a neighboring town to get a bite to eat. I was shaking and freaked out by this. I didn't tell anybody in my friend's family. Then, I decided to go back to the same spot the next night. I wanted to prove myself this was just a fluke. I was hoping to see something again, but I was also scared. I was thinking that maybe I was crazy. But it happened again. I saw the same thing again. This time, I only saw the one. Like it was waiting for me. I quickly drove off and that was enough. I was convinced that there was some sort of creature there that was not normal. I was pretty sure that they were not dogs. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I was terrified. The next day, I decided to ask a good friend of mine, not the one I lived with, but this one is a police officer, about what I had seen. I didn't tell him everything, just the basics. I asked him, is it possible that it could have been a coyote? And he tells me it was highly unlikely. I mean, I would have seen many others. He tells me that he believes what I saw is called a wolf dog, but not a werewolf. The thought that something or someone could change into a half-man, half-wolf hybrid was too outlandish. I hadn't even told them about the part of it walking on two legs. I just explained that it was some large dog. I didn't think he'd believe me if I was honest. I would later learn that these creatures are called dogmen and are all over the country, apparently. Then, I would go on to have several other encounters. I have had a few other encounters with dogmen since this first happened, so I know this thing is real. It was not my imagination. It wasn't a coyote and it was not a regular wolf. I have seen it again and again. In fact, two times in broad daylight. And I have had other people see it with me. I have had other people see it by themselves and talk about their sightings with me. I am convinced this is a real creature. Some type of canine-like creature very strange. It is the stuff of legends, to be honest. I know what the creature wants me to see it, because it has shown itself to me several times. It's as if it is now waiting for me now. I've had other people see it, like I said, and they too are terrified. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. It has been seen by other people in our community and town. Maybe there's more of them than just this one pack. There is a huge pack that I know of running around and scaring the daylights out of people. It's weird, you know, because, like, once you see it and it knows it, you become marked, dare I say, and we all start seeing this thing far more often than you'd ever like to. You don't ever just have one dogman encounter. It just starts there. Anyway, this is my story of what happened that night that I first saw it. I know that it's real, and so many others are seeing it like you document constantly. I've had a lot of experiences with this creature, and sometimes it makes me wonder, what does it want from me? I'm still trying to figure that out, to be honest. I was driving home from work one night, and I was about an hour away in total from home. I was driving on a two-lane highway, and it was about 10.30 at night. 
I'm doing about 55 miles an hour, and I was the only car on the road. Now, I was about a mile from my exit when I see something cross into the road. Thinking it was a deer, I slow down, and as I get closer, I realized it was not a deer. It was something else entirely. I've never seen an animal like this. It was standing in the middle of the road, and it was facing my direction. I slow down to about 35 miles an hour, and now I'm roughly 100 or so yards away from it. I was looking at it, and I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is that? I was not sure what it was. It was strange looking. I stopped my car, rolled down my car window, about halfway down. I reach over to my glove compartment and grab my handgun. I had never been in a situation where I would need to use it, and I doubt I would even try to shoot at it. I mean, it was far too large. I cannot get a good shot at it anyway. I grabbed my handgun and I pointed it at it. The thing turned its head about 45 degrees, looked at me, and looked at my handgun. It began to growl very loudly, so I pointed directly at its face my hand shaking and I'm nervous to pull a shot off. I was very afraid of whatever this was. And so I put my car slowly in reverse and go back maybe 20 yards. It was still standing there, standing its ground. So I grab my phone and I call 911. I tell them there's this strange animal standing in the middle of the road and I have my gun pointed at it. Now, during this, it was still growling and I wanted to come and check it out. I gave them my location. The dispatcher did not believe me. I was afraid it was going to try and get in my car. I looked at this thing, and it turned its eyes to me, and it was a really deep red color. I realized this thing was not human in any way. Then, this thing kind of let out a huff, turned and leapt quickly off into the wood line. I nervously put my gun back, and, and I hightailed it out of there that night. The next morning, I started to think to myself, that could not have happened. So I drive back to that intersection, or that part of road, but I can never see anything beyond the road that would give me any glimpse of it ever being there. I was hoping to find footprints or something, but nothing. I even pulled over and parked my car. I walked about half a mile up and down the road, and there was nothing. No hair, no traces of ever making me think that I wasn't insane. Nothing unusual. No strange tracks, no evidence. Nothing. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I just dreamt it. I don't know. But since when does that sort of thing happen? I'm still at a loss. I was driving home one evening in October of 2019. My ex-wife Sally and her new husband Derek and myself were in my car. I was driving a Chevy 2000, if I remember right, and I was about seven miles out from a local hospital. That's the only geolocation I can remember. And I see this, what I thought was a dog, walking along the side of the road. At first, he seems to be kind of minding his own business, and being a jerk, I guess I thought I'd try and scare him by speeding up to get him to kind of get out of the road. Not that he was in the road, but he was kind of weaving out. I was gaining on him pretty fast, and the animal reacted to my approach by jumping into the center of the road. But I didn't slow down, and I figured I had a car and this was just a dog. When I startled this though, he fixed on me and as the human antagonist, and I saw that this was no dog, but a creature that looked more wolfish than like a dog. So all in one moment, I'm glancing at this animal as I have to swerve slowly to the opposite side of the road to avoid hitting what I thought was a dog but is actually not, and my eyes are supposed to be on the center line. But I remember seeing some sort of pattern on this animal, and I'm thinking, is this a bear? What is this? When, unbelievably, this creature, very comfortably mind you, stands up on its hind legs with its front paws and tries to reach out to the driver's side door, looking at me with a snarl expression on its face. Just sit with me here for a moment. Visualize a seven foot tall, upright canine werewolf in the front of a Chevy Malibu. I passed by him while he was there and I cranked the wheel to swerve and swerve the car over to the side of the road. 
we came to a stop on the right-hand side. This thing was now less than 40 feet away from us and slowly approaching our car. The animal sort of awkwardly walked. While it seemed to comfortably get up on two legs, it was weird. I can't describe it well. And it's as if he was kind of hobbling over to us. Very odd. And sort of swinging back and forth his arms, using them for balance like a human. This thing gave us a pissed off expression, then turned and quickly headed into the woods to our left. I'd say east, but it's been over a year, and I don't exactly remember how that road is laid out. We watched him until he kind of got a little deeper off into the woods. We were all pretty spooked by this sighting, so we turn the car around and get back on the road. As we're pulling away, this same creature shoots out of the woods coming towards our car like a fired missile. My ex-wife and her husband start screaming, so I pedal to the metal and this thing is now darting into the woods next to us, staying parallel to the vehicle the entire time, but in the woods, while I am trying to drive like a madman and get us away from this thing. I remember at one point, I looked over and see this thing running right by our vehicle, and now I'm starting to panic. This thing bolts out and jumps directly over our car into the adjacent woods on the other side, and I nearly swerve and hit an oncoming vehicle. I drive a little ways further until this thing seems like it's not chasing us anymore. But I'm here to tell you that it's some pretty real freaky stuff. Imagine the terror they felt in Jurassic Park when the T-Rex was chasing them in the car. Obviously that's a movie, but that's kind of what it felt like. Talk about a nightmare. I don't know what the hell chased us that night, but it sure as hell sent all of us on a freakout. I've been a truck driver for years and years, but I can never forget the one night that I had a very horrifying experience while being out on the road. Let me just tell you my experience. I was out driving this road at around 2am. I was on my way to the nearest town to deliver a load of produce. I was driving down the road on a straightaway when I see a pair of red eyes glowing in the dark beside the road. I thought it was an animal at first and I slowed down the truck to see what it was. It turned out to be a dog man. I looked back at him as he was walking on all fours towards me. He had long hair and was covered in a dark brownish red fur. Listen, I know what it was. I listen to a lot of cryptid radio shows and I'm pretty knowledgeable when it comes to stuff like cryptids and Bigfoot and Dogman. I just instinctively know that this is what I saw. Plus. It looked like a flippin' werewolf. Anyway, I just drove as fast as I could away from the creature. I was scared to death. I can't believe that I saw what I did. I never even told anybody about the encounter until now. I don't know why I never told anybody before, but it's just too scary to think about. I'm pretty scared of dogmen to this day. Even though for the longest time, I'd hoped they didn't exist. I hoped they were just some sort of fictional entertainment. Now, I know they're real. I just hope I never see one again. Oh, and I've tried to join some groups on Facebook where you can tell about your personal encounter story, but I've decided against it. I really don't want to face ridicule from people about what I saw and decided it was best to keep it to myself. Even hardcore Bigfoot enthusiasts will be quick to denounce any dogman encounter. I even wonder if you'll take me seriously. Thanks for reading anyway. One night, while on my back porch having a smoke after a long day of stress and work, I see these pair of red eyes just sitting high up in the tree line, looking right over in my direction. They were set back in a dark outline, not really having a face or form, but I knew they were staring right at me. I immediately freeze and just looked back at them. There was a huge pair of eyes, and they were bigger than normal human eyes, and they were very dark in color. The eyes were set higher up in the silhouette of a head, and it was a little lower than the top of a human head. I kept staring at it, and it just stared back at me. I was in disbelief and shock. I could not figure out what this was, and I could see its head move a little. Its eyes would kind of move back and forth, but 
It never turned away or left. It was watching me the entire time, and I was watching it. I don't even know how long this went on for. It could have been seconds, but it felt like minutes or even hours. You know how time will drag. Then, as it starts to move a bit, I could see the shape is actually not that of a human, but really a large dog that's on two legs standing up. I was frozen in fear and disbelief. I didn't know what to do. I was in shock, trying to figure out what this was. And so I'm thinking to myself, what on earth is this thing? I was being very conscientious of my surroundings, and I was on high alert. I could not move. I was frozen on my back porch. As it stood there, I could see it turn its head to the right to look towards the back side of my house where I had a rather large shed. It was looking around the side of the shed, and as I'm watching it, I hear this cry come from the direction it's looking. It sounds like a muffled cry, but my only guess is that it possibly, whatever animal this was, had a youngling over by my shed, and possibly saw me as a threat. As soon as I heard this cry, it takes off running straight up to the trees and into the tree line. Then, I hear it emerge out of the trees on the other side and goes to the side of the shed where I heard this crying-like noise to begin with. It then runs off into the other tree line, opposite of the shed. And pretty scared by the whole ordeal, I decided to run in my house and stay put. I was far too afraid to deal with whatever that thing was out there in my yard. So, I just tried to go to bed, but I could not sleep. I tossed and turned and could not get my mind to focus on anything but what I saw. It was about a good hour later, maybe plus, that I heard something large come up on the back porch, and I heard this loud bang, and the door to my back porch was rattling very hard. It startled me. I jump up out of bed and go see what it was. I opened the door with a weapon and a light, and it was dark. I could not see anything. I turned the light on, but who or whatever that had come onto my porch was now gone. I shut the door, locking it, and I go back to bed. This was some terrifying stuff. Obviously, somebody or something was trying to open the door and get into my house. Is there any coincidence between what I saw that night and what happened? I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, I stayed up the rest of the night. I was too afraid to fall back asleep. I was very alert and awake. So, maybe about two or three in the morning, and I decide to go back and have a cigarette. I was on my same back porch smoking when I see the same dark shape again approaching my house. I look over and it stops, and now it's standing across the yard from me, right almost where I had seen it the first time. I could see that it was clearly looking in my direction, and now, because of the night, the moon was now positioned in the sky differently this time, and gave much more visibility to what I was looking at. I could see this thing was some sort of werewolf-looking creature. I was convinced I was having a psychotic breakup, so I was like, you know what, I'm done. I put my cigarette out, walked inside, and decided I had just deprived my body of too much sleep. It was time for bed. I was too tired to be afraid. I wake up the next morning, go out to my porch, and kind of evaluate things. I look around. There were no signs of anything in the yard. So, I decided to go check out the shed, to see if anything was around there. I checked around the shed, and there was nothing at all. I went around the side of the shed, towards the back, and I find two dead birds on the ground. They looked like they had been hit by something, like bludgeoned. I kind of look at them more, and there were no signs of what exactly killed them, just that they were possibly killed with a large object, like they were kind of flattened out. They were dead. As I'm looking at them, I start to smell this atrocious rotten odor, and it's not coming from these birds, and I cannot place where the smell is coming from exactly. So I'm starting to look around, and I finally see the source, maybe five yards away, closer to the back of the tree line, is this dead doe shredded to pieces. This thing looked like it got into a fight with a meat grinder, and it stunk so bad. This wasn't that long ago. And after doing some looking up online, 
I think I'm convinced I have a dogman or two living around where I live. Great. I have a very old barn on the far side of my property that my husband and I have not used or touched in years. It needs some desperate repairing on the inside and I haven't gotten around to it or got the time. However, I believe something is making the barn its home. I see this large dark shape moving around the barn near dusk. I could see it from part of my house when I look out my window and see these tall ears perched on top of whatever animal it is. Sometimes I'm certain it will come up to the house because I can hear its loud, heavy breathing, and I see its eyes glowing, red in color. It stands on two legs. I promise you it's not a bear of any kind or any known animal that I've ever seen. And I'm not really sure how to explain what I'm seeing. But you know what lurks beneath. I've just got glimpses of it by now, of this thing looking in our windows and walking around out near our house. I'm not really sure what it is. My husband and I have seen this creature from time to time, and we don't see it all the time. My husband is convinced it's a Bigfoot. Me? I'm not so sure. When I was a little girl, I had a Bigfoot encounter of my own by a creek where I used to live. And those wood boogers don't look anything like what this thing looks like. This is much more canid in appearance, if that makes any sense. I'm not trying to suggest werewolf. I don't even want to use that term because it makes it sound fictitious and ridiculous. Anyhow, the other night, I had gotten up to go to the bathroom, and I looked out my bedroom window and I see this thing, maybe a hundred yards or, or so from the house, standing there. It was looking toward the house and it had these enormous ears and these red eyes, the same ones it's always had. So I know it's the same creature. Its arms are hanging exceptionally low to its knees. It then turned and kind of slowly walked off into the woods. Scared me to death that night. Because even though it hasn't tried to harm us, you just never know. I've tried to look online and the only thing I could find is these things called dogmen. What's the difference between that and a werewolf? And is this true? I live in a very small rural community here in the southern United States. My family has lived in this part for several generations. I consider it a very safe place to live. I always felt safe growing up here, and it seems like a very safe place to raise children. I have never heard of a single violent crime committed in my own town, and there is a strong sense of community that keeps our tiny town running smoothly. On most nights, I could even leave my doors unlocked and my keys inside my vehicles, and not have to worry about a thing. For the most part, the animals in my town are very well behaved. There are always the occasional loose dogs that chase after cars, but they're harmless. One evening, when I was about 24 years old, my friend and her boyfriend and I decided to go for a drive around town. We were just going to drive around the main streets and then make our way back to home. It was a nice evening, and there were not too many people out and about. About a block from my house, I noticed this strange looking dog coming out of a back alley. Now, right off the bat, the thing that I noticed that stood out immediately was just how large and how black this dog was. I mean, it was unusually dark. It wasn't just that it was a dark colored dog, I mean, this thing looked like it had been dipped in ink. It was so dark that it was hard to make out details, but then its attention was turned towards us. It immediately rears its head at us and bares its teeth. We slow down the car and as we're looking at this, we're trying to make sense of what we're seeing because two and two are just not making four. This thing has way too many sharp teeth in its mouth to be a dog. Plus, it looks awkward, like its front legs were much stronger and longer than its back legs. So I thought, is this a mutant or something? Maybe a mutated dog? I don't know. We were scared, but we were also very curious about what we were looking at. This animal spent maybe another second baring its teeth and then quickly kind of backed away into the shadows of the alley. We were all pretty creeped out by it. The impression I got from whatever kind of dog this was is that it did not want to be seen. 
We just so happened to be at the right place at the right time, and we caught it. It did not like that it had been seen. Still one of the freakier memories I have. And no, I never did find out what it was. That's why I'm emailing you. I was 18 at the time, and one day, I decided to go hunting. I had my shotgun and a bag of shells with me. I shot at a few birds and rabbits here and there. I was in the middle of the woods by myself, and I was about to pack it in, when I heard some strange rustling in the bushes. I then caught a glimpse of what I thought was a dogman. It appeared roughly seven feet tall and had a dog-like face with really long hair. It also had a long tail like that of a wolf. I began to panic and I pointed my gun at the creature. I shot at it and it let out a high-pitched scream. I then ran as fast as I could. It didn't chase me until I ran back to my truck though. I got into my truck and started it. Then I drove off. I went home and never told anybody about it. I believe that dogmen are more common than people even realize. I don't know what the dogmen wanted, but I'm terrified and I don't think I will go back to those woods hunting ever again. I knew all about dogmen originally because my uncle has had several encounters with them, so I'm familiar with the concept and what they look like. I never thought though in a million years I would ever run into one myself. I'm glad that I wrote down my encounter. It's nice to know that I'm not the only person in the world that has ever actually seen one. I mean, hell, before this, I thought I would never see one. But I guess I'm wrong. In 1991, I was lucky enough to be able to take a trip to Europe with my parents. I was very young at this time, but I still remember some of the things that had happened. I was staying in a hotel in London, England, and I was in my own room, lying in bed, looking out the window. The window was open. The window was open. I wanted to go to sleep, but I kept hearing a sound outside, a sound that kept drawing my attention. It was a sound that was a mix of a squeal and a gurgle. I remember that it was coming from somewhere in the air over the nearby street. So. I kept looking out the window to try and find a source, and I see a shadow pass over the street. I looked up to see that it was indeed looked like a gargoyle. It was a little over a few feet tall and appeared to have bat-like wings and almost a black beak-shaped like object on its face. It had a long spaded tail. It appeared dark smoky gray in color, and it was flying straight towards me in the window. I remember. But it got so close, I could see vivid detail in its face. It had yellow eyes with dark gray, black metal slanted pupils in each eye. It also had dark gray lips and humanistic features. It even had kind of pointed ears like that you would see devils have. It had a mouth that was wide open, revealing several rows of tiny pointed teeth, kind of like how fish have. And it was making this awful squeal as it came towards me flying. Now, this was kind of closer to night, so there wasn't a whole lot of light out, but light enough that the buildings were emanating light that I could see this thing. It was going to fly straight towards the glass and come into my room. I remember that I was extremely frightened. I screamed at the top of my voice. It flew right past the window, dodging us. I remember that it was so close to the glass, I even saw its reflection. I remember that there was a flash of white light behind it as soon as it followed. I remember that it flew right past the window over the street, over to some other buildings, and finally disappeared. I closed the window so quickly and was so frightened that I cried myself to sleep that night. Of course, my parents were rich, so they had their own room and thought I would benefit at the age of seven of me having my own. So I was all alone. The next morning, I was still upset and I told my parents about what I had seen and then I told them that I had seen a gargoyle. They found it very odd and they did not believe me. They kept asking me what I was doing out of bed. I told them that I had heard the sound and I saw this thing that I thought was a gargoyle. 
They told me it was probably a dream, but I knew it was not a dream. It was all very real. It happened, and I have never been able to forget. In fact, I'm still afraid of gargoyles. I keep using the term gargoyle because I'm not sure what else to call them. It was some demonic humanoid. That's all I know how to describe it as, and I remember, even at that age, it scared me badly. One night, when I was in the Navy, back in 1982 or 1983, I was on night watch. I was stationed in the Persian Gulf. On that night, I was standing watch as the quartermaster, and I was on the starboard bridge wing, looking at the horizon. There were about six of us on watch, and the sky was extremely clear. It was a moonless night. The stars were very bright, and the sea was very calm. Up ahead of us, I saw a very bright light rising up out of the sea. It was not a plane. It was very bright. I could not tell if it was the reflection of the moon or a star, but I was so fascinated by this light that I wanted to see where it was coming from. I kept looking and looking, and I saw the light get bigger, and I could tell it was coming from underneath the water. Some very large object was rising from the water, emanating a very low, blue-colored light. It was then that I noticed it was a round object, maybe about a hundred or so feet in diameter, and it was rising very slowly out of the sea. It was big, and very dark in the center, like a black shadow. Only the light of the stars reflected on it, and it itself emitted light, if that makes any sense. I watched it rise from the sea for about 10 or 15 minutes as it slowly ascended into the sky. Did I mention how round it was? And it was so large that I could see it, even when I turned my head. I remember that I was so fascinated, I forgot to even call the captain. I only remember to tell the bridge, watch, standard, to inform the captain when it reached its highest point. I watched it rise up over the horizon. It rose up and then just stopped and disappeared, before hanging out in the air, all the while making a very low, low humming sound. It was about a hundred or so feet up in the sky, out of the sea, before I heard it disappear. I watched for about a few more minutes afterwards, waiting for this thing to appear again in the sky. I was in so much amazement and terrified at the same time, holding on to the platform railing. I could not believe what I was seeing. So I told others, guys, you gotta see this. They came out and stood beside me to watch it. All of us had seen it. I mean, it was so big, how could you have not have seen it? I mean, none of us missed it. I remember talking to everybody afterwards and we were all very quiet. Nobody spoke. It was just hanging there in the air. And then suddenly, when it went away, we were all kind of expecting it to return. But instead, it just disappeared. I remember that it was so fast that none of us could even imagine it would have gone. I was also scared to tell the captain, and scared to sleep for about the next week. But when I finally told the captain, he had told me that, well, there were other ships in the area that thought that it was some kind of secret experimental UFO craft. I didn't buy the explanation. We all believe that we saw a UFO. I mean, I don't know what else to call it. I have no idea what it was. But I am positive that it was not a military craft or a plane of any kind. Here's my story. It happened when I was about four or five. I am now 30. I was living in an apartment complex here in St. Louis. I had an apartment facing a playground, so I would always be out there playing. One night, I was sitting out there and it was now getting pretty dark. I was the only kid out there at the time. And I see this creature come out of the woods. It was human-like, but I remember thinking even at that age it was not a human. It had a beak and was all black and kind of slithered in its movements. It was so tall that it easily was able to leap over the fence into the playground. It walked around, away from me, and I just had the feeling it was looking for somebody, or looking for me. I remember thinking I had to run. So, at four or five, 
You can imagine how terrified I was when I ran inside and woke up my mom. I told her that I had not just seen a monster outside, but that it was coming for me. I don't remember if I told her what it was or not. Maybe I told her it was a goblin. But I do remember that it scared her. She made me go back out there with her, and she told me that there was nothing out there, and that I made her get up for nothing. So I got scolded for making things up. I remember thinking, though, that it was still there, that it was just hiding, waiting for her to leave so it can come looking for me, and I was still terrified. But after that, I stayed out of that playground for quite a while. The creature looked like some strange mix between a carnivorous bird like a vulture and a human, or something. I just remember thinking at four or five years old how ugly it was, and being at that age, how scared I was. Look, I really don't have an explanation for where it came from or why it exists, but I do believe that this thing is out there still, and there might be more of them. I have to live with this memory now forever, and I am a firm believer in things that are not supposed to exist, but do. I'm a believer because I myself had this experience. In 2000, while driving home from work in Mineral, Idaho, which is about 70 miles southwest of Salt Lake City, I came over the hill just east of Parawuna Pass, going around 10 p.m. at night. Looking south from this point, the road drops suddenly into Bonneville Salt Flats. On the road right below me, there were these six humanoids running down the road shoulder to shoulder. They were all very tall and thin, with long black hair and pointed ears. Each appeared to be wearing tattered robes. They moved quickly. Out of freaked curiosity, I began to slow down and watch them to try and get a better look when I suddenly see one of these things turn and look right at me. And then slowly, all of them very slowly turned and faced me directly. We were still 30 to 50 feet away from each other. Now I'm very creeped out, and so I floored it, made the turn, and never looked back. It was a while before I ever told my son and others about what I saw. And finally, years later, I felt enough courage to share my experience on Facebook my cousin, who lives 14 miles south of the pass, interviewed her elderly neighbor about werewolves spending time in the area, since they firmly believe that there are werewolf creatures out there. The neighbor said they chased her in the mountains when she was young, killed her friend, stole her family's animals, but never admitted it to the police because the dog befriended one of these creatures who ran off. She said most farmers around there had a greyhound because these creatures were always stalking and looking for more prey. But apparently, these greyhound dogs would keep these creatures at bay. You could still hear them howling some nights. Well, about 30 years prior, while on an evening deer run, I was out with my kids and came across a fresh kill in the sagebrush. This kill was torn into pieces, shredded like cheese. So... Either there are some sort of wolf-like creatures walking around, or maybe there's truth to these skinwalker shapeshifter beings out here in the desert. One thing is for sure, you have to be careful out here. It can get very dangerous, and if you are not prepared, well, prepare for bad things to happen. Before I end this email, I'll tell you about one quick encounter I remember one of my family members telling me about, at least that they thought there was a large coyote walking around their house at night. One night, my family member was actually out on her porch and said that the coyote thing was following her and their small dogs. She got scared, ran into the house, and so after wandering around some more, this thing, what she thought was an upright coyote, just ups and leaves. One of our other relatives had hunted in New Mexico for coyotes before and he came and visited with her and said he was very familiar with this kind of evil spirit and told her he could sense its presence all around her trailer and all over the land they lived on, that this being had purposefully left its mark there to let others know not to come here. Really scary stuff, honestly. When I was 16 years old, I was living in a small town called Mountain View, Arkansas, in a small house that my mother and I had rented. I was up late one night and 
I was all alone. I was going to bed and I heard a noise coming from the backyard. I went to check it out and saw this black figure walking towards the house from the wood line. It appeared to be about seven feet tall with a long curved beak face and large glowing yellow eyes. It had bat-like wings on the back and large talon like claws. Terrified, I ran back inside locking the door. I wish I would have had a camera or cell phone to take a picture, but it was like 2004, so I didn't have a cell phone yet. I'm not sure what it was, a demon or a bat creature or what. I think it maybe might have been a demon, maybe a gargoyle, but I'm not sure. This wouldn't be the first time, though, that something strange and I had run in together. I have had many paranormal experiences. The two that stand out the most are just before this sighting occurred. I was still 16 years old at the time, and I was home alone, and I was asleep. I woke up to see a black silhouette figure standing over me. But this figure wasn't an average-sized man. It was about 7 to 8 feet tall, and had only what I can describe to you as burning red eyes that were filled with hate and malice, like it wanted to torment me and hurt me physically in any way it could. It was just radiating this aura off of it. You know how you can get a sense for good and bad people? Well, this thing was just giving off a really bad aura. And I tried screaming, but my body would not let me. I was paralyzed and I tried moving, but I could not. I was so scared. The figure just stared at me, and then it disappeared. I wasn't able to move for another few minutes, and when I could, I was terrified and freaked out. I did not even feel my legs. I felt like I was going to pee my pants. I just wanted to curl up in a ball and cry, but I could not. I was too scared to even do that. Eventually, I fell asleep, but couldn't wait to tell my mom about what had happened. She believed me, thankfully. I guess, come to find out that she had a heaping helping of crazy things happen to her too, while she was in the same house. From seeing spirits, to seeing what she described to me as little imp-like creatures that tried to torture her early in the morning by prodding her with what she tells me as sharp objects. She never specified what she meant by that. I was young, so I didn't know what to do. I started praying that night, and the next day, I went to the library and really started reading the Bible. I read it and began to pray a little more. I still prayed and read the Bible like every day for a while, and it definitely seemed to help. I don't want to say I was religious or anything, but I had an understanding of the spirituality of it. I mean, I did have a lot of experiences with spirits and angels from my dreams and meditations. I definitely wasn't as scared as I was before, but I knew that something just wasn't right. I began practicing yoga and meditation shortly thereafter, and that felt like it was helping. Encounters at that point seemed to really come to a slowdown, and same with my mother. This was all shortly before we saw this physical entity, what I would describe as a gargoyle-like bat creature, and it had a beak and these nasty hideous features, so maybe not that. Part of me believes it was the evil of this house that was allowed to manifest into a physical form to come after me, because I had been doing something right by praying, and I guess it did not like that. Then, fast forward more. After my sighting of this thing and how terrifying it was, I find out my mom had been seeing what she tells me are goblins. They're these hideous little creatures, maybe two to three feet tall, the size of a toddler, walking around her room at night. She'll wake up to them, holding her down, trying to have their way with her, biting her, telling her they're going to kill her. Just really horrible stuff. Anyway, we put up with this stuff for about another year, off and on before we finally ended up moving. I remember because it was right at my senior year of high school when we moved out of that house. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. I've always believed that there is good and evil in the world, and I don't believe the devil is always going to be the one to come out the winner. I think God and the angels from the spirit realm are much, much stronger, and I believe if you have enough faith and you're open to the experience, then you can definitely see the other side. 
I don't think it's something that happens all the time, but I think you can experience it if you want to put the effort in. Now, I don't want to give out the details of the place we moved afterwards because I'm unsure of the location to be exact. But I'll just say this, it was much closer to town. Hi, what lurks beneath? I know this isn't a normal story email that you're so accustomed to getting, but I found this article and I think you can appreciate it. I'm sure if you read it, your viewers can too. Here it is. Encounters with dogmen have been reported for years around the world, but in Scandinavia, they've been chronicled for as long as documented records have been kept. Jens Lechman has studied the dogmen, performing a statistical assessment on newspaper and folklore archives to identify areas where they have been seen. He also looked at ecosystems and demographics in a study intended to prove or falsify the dogmen. By diachronic measurements, sightings have occurred mostly in the fall with numbers peaking in October. The most frequently reported times are around 4 p.m. to 4 a.m. The size of the creatures, according to Lechman, range from 2 to 3 meters and they are less commonly sighted near water. One distinguishing characteristic that makes the dogmen stand out from a common dog is a prolonged tail, facial features such as pointed ears, and the defining factor of a creature being half man and half dog. However, a lot of it is also behavior. Local lore liken the creature to attack on livestock, horses, cows, and sheep. The local river may have been polluted because of large amounts of blood in the water by locals at one point hundreds of years ago. But the watershed for that river shows a large amount of white-tailed deer activity, giving the dogmen ample food opportunities. The animal most likely to attack livestock would be a stray wolf. Are wolves responsible for these sightings? They are territorial animals. Human activity gives them an even greater sense of urgency. Lechman suggests that human encroachment is of importance when evaluating the behavior of these creatures, and he says this, I ruled out the idea of the dogman is a dog-wolf hybrid. I found it quite odd that these things occurring in the northernmost areas of Sweden, such as dogs being found decapitated. Several hunters reported not seeing deer, even in their designated hunting areas. Other reports of strange footprints in snow have been dismissed as bear trails, even when tracks don't belong to any Russian or polar bear found in Sweden. Lechman suggests that, in some instances, the creature may be more human-like, but he cannot narrow down a specific description. Many creatures described by eyewitness reports could be considered humanoid bipedal animals, which occur quite often throughout history and have even been associated with the paranormal. At least one other researcher suggests it may be more of a problem with misidentification than something paranormal. Cryptozoologist Johan Randwall contested Lechman's claim that these creatures could not be a dog and wolf crossbreed. It's known that animals can become fixed in certain inbred or regionalized structures, like many domestic dogs, but the facts still prove that crossbreeds are not a common thing, and not only must be two species. Coyotes and dogs look more like dogmen than, for instance, a bottlenose dolphin. Considering that forming hybrid species is thousands or even millions of years old, to place a doubt over a well-insured claim doesn't hold much water. Perhaps this serves as a warning if you request people moving to rural areas to not further overpopulate the landscape. Regardless, whether these are really dogmen or not something is occurring in the region for people to be so interested in. I was crossing railroad tracks when I looked up, and I caught my first glimpse ever of a cryptid. It was a wolf, peering through trees on my left. I briefly caught my second visual, this time straight on, of the same creature crouched, looking at me. There was a sudden blur of motion, and this wolf was running toward me. I hardly had enough time to think, and so I ran to my left. I turned around just in time to see this thing running toward me. And this thing was pursuing me hot on two legs, the same way an Olympic runner would run directly at you. Unrelenting, I held my breath and dove into a small pond that was right near me, hoping that this would deter this thing from chasing me. I know it sounds strange, but when you're in fight or flight mode, you do some questionable things. 
This thing stops and hesitates, unsure of what to do next. I stayed below the surface of the pond, trying my best to hold my breath and to not surface. All I could see was the faint outline of this thing just standing there, waiting for me to surface. The thought of what was chasing me two seconds ago, then not doing anything, made me really question my reality. I waited for almost two minutes before I felt my lungs about to burst, and as I came to the surface, this thing was now completely out of sight. After looking around, I couldn't see it, but man oh man, I could feel it. I just felt this heavy presence, this lingering feeling looming in the area, and I knew it had to be close by. I knew if I did not act now, I was getting out of here alive. So I quickly pulled myself to shore and made a break for it. Immediately, I hear this thing bursting out of the bushes and starts pursuing me yet again. I'm really not sure, looking back, why a mere pond and me being submerged in water with it having anything to do with it stopping to chase me. Maybe it knew I was hiding, so it too took the chance to also hide and wait for me. What I can tell you is patience is virtue. I must have been a thorn in its proverbial side. Something made this thing tire of me quickly because it gave up on me as a meal and left. I gave myself a fair distance of space and waited for what seemed to be the right moment to give my legs enough freedom to start running again. I was still tucked in behind a few trees, just trying to catch my breath. It was then that I heard that sound of this wolf's claws pushing against the soil, the thudding of their legs coming towards me. It was coming back again. I knew I could not wait around. I could hear it coming back, unsure of what to do exactly. I peeked out behind a large tree in concealment as this thing was sprinting towards me again, knocking a massive tree down as it went. All I could think of was if it gets any closer. I'm a goner. No one to stand witness but me and the animal's next meal. This thing didn't stop. It was fixated on bringing harm to me and killing me. As it furled down to make another leap, all I could think of was, God, please, let it fall. Leave me be. Those prayers must have been answered as this blur's body fell into a softer overgrown area behind me, in the earth. I turned around to see this creature falling down into the small pit, covered in mulch and pine and tree limbs. Immediately, I began retreating back the way I came. I picked up my pace and it did not stop running until I was safely in my car. I could hear this thing screaming and howling the entire way, pissed that it had lost me. Whatever it was, was some unknown creature with an ape-like body shape, connected to the deaths of two people affiliated with the same people connected with the first death of a professor and a student. Someone took pictures of film associated with the deaths. I knew my friend who was working with them back in the woods in 1964. There's something going on, and it's important for somebody to finally find out and really expose what's going on here. I am of high moral standard, and personally, with a deep understanding of this spiritual world. Too much to explain here in a small email, so I'll cut to the chase. This is my eyewitness encounter of this hominid creature. May 6, 2017. I was finishing my loop around as I was walking home from the market, where I had just finished doing errands. From the corner of my eye, I saw movement in a nearby tree. Upon looking, there was my first great sighting. This humanoid monkey-like creature swung down between the branches as a fleetless and then dropped down very quickly, disappearing behind the tree. The creature crouched at first and was swaying side to side, all while staring at me. It appeared weightless, like I said. Once I saw it smoothly sit on the limb, it immediately leapt away and vanished. The drop was fascinating and quick. I don't know if it was followed or chased by something bigger, but I assume it was not alone. There was no repeated sighting, and no real noise accompanied this sighting, so I'm not sure. Another interesting thing, too, was 
I could see, at least I thought, was another figure at my peripheral on my left as I was walking too. Once I look over though, it was always gone. I'm not sure how to describe such a strange creature. However, I do know for me personally, that is something I will never forget. I only saw it for a brief moment, and have even questioned myself, but it happened. This was my second encounter to this point. As a few weeks ago, I experienced something brush past my legs in my sleep, and I felt its physical presence bruise me while in a deep trance-like state. I believe the reoccurring sightings I have of the same type of being or beings is of high spiritual importance. Having this encounter, I have since relocated to Mesa, Arizona back in February, and I'm keeping my eye out for what may be more of these things. I was out camping one evening by a large lake, all by myself. The night was beautiful, and it was a serene, quiet evening. All of a sudden, I felt this breeze of extremely cold air, and a presence walking up beside me, but I saw nothing. As I feel the presence draw closer, I could hear the noise of heavy breathing. I assumed it was a bear, and I turned on my flashlight to look around. I didn't see anything, but I could feel something. I could hear breathing, but there was no signs of anything near me. Completely unnerved by this newfound sighting or experience, I sat up and decided it was time to retire to my tent. I quickly jumped in, afraid of what was going to happen. I stayed in my tent the rest of the night, clutching hold of my flashlight and a tiny pocket knife, should anything happen. Attempting to calm myself, I distracted myself with thoughts of remembering camping as a child. Then, I heard two loud screeches just outside my tent, then nothing. Shortly thereafter, I started hearing these loud noises approaching my tent in the night. They sounded large and whatever it was that I was hearing. I was panicking, thinking two really large men were going to come, invade, and kill me. The sounds would stop abruptly just outside my tent, then walk away and return at another angle. Several times this went on, I could hear three separate footsteps and sounds. The whole encounter lasted for several hours. It felt like an eternity. I thought I was going crazy. I just wanted it to stop. There were all sorts of other strange noises. Some of them were screams and growls, while the others were strange stomping noises. Then it would go silent for a moment, and I hear what sounded like a large branch being ripped off a tree right by me. Then. I hear it getting kicked off into the forest. Now, not only was I scared because of what I was experiencing, but I felt like whatever this was is trying to intimidate me and wanting to hurt me. Finally, it stopped and I could not keep it together. I tried calling out for help, just hoping somebody else was around, but I heard nothing but me. I felt as though I was completely helpless and all alone. I knew I was doomed. This had been going on for hours now at this point, and these things were coming back and forth around my campsite. They were always circling my tent. It's like they were waiting for the right moment to strike. You could imagine I was on edge like crazy. And finally, the noises eventually ceased for a period of time. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. They could still be out there watching me, but I was not going to take any chances or risks. I figured that staying put in my tent was the best course of action, at least until sunrise. I waited out the entire night in my tent, completely frozen in fear. Morning eventually came and I had not slept at all. Thoroughly exhausted, I decided to hike my way out as soon as I could. Upon exiting my tent, the area around me was trashed huge branches were ripped off the large fir tree about 10 feet away from my tent. My supplies were thrown all over the campsite. Frightened but intrigued, I grabbed my stuff, hit the trail looking for a clear spot where I could escape, because I couldn't exactly remember the section of trail that I had hiked in. I only had the backpack that was salvageable, and of course my tent. 
everything else outside was destroyed. Upon getting to my car more than just a mile away, I opened my trunk, put my gear inside. At the time, I had no idea what had happened the night before, but as I'm closing my trunk, getting ready to enter my car, I heard this horrific scream off in the distance. It sounded like a man's yell, but really deep and really loud. Like whatever made it had a huge set of lungs. I froze in place, listening for a few seconds. Then, out of nowhere, these strange noises start sounding off all around me. I felt immediate danger, and just like the night before, I realized if I didn't get in my car at that very moment, my life would be in danger. Terrified, I jumped in my car, walked out the doors, and left as fast as I could. Still hearing these noises echoing off in the distance, what did I hear the previous night? What did all of this mean? All I can say is that this experience left me completely overcome with fear, confusion, and amazement. I've never had an experience like that before. I still feel shaken about how such a large creature can move about at night, surround a tent like it did, and scare somebody, yet without ever being seen. There are theories and explanations for what it could have been, but I really have my doubts about most of them. I just don't think everybody has come up yet with a plausible answer. You have to be aware that how loud these were, intimidating and ferocious these things were. Whatever it was, I'm certain it's not a bear. Is, is it possible I encountered a Bigfoot? I was working a late night shift at a meat processing plant. My coworker and friend Sean and I were smoking a cigarette outside on break and just chatting away by our car when we hear something off in the trees right beside the parking lot. It naturally distracts us and we both turn our attention to what we just heard. I mean, it was pretty loud. All we could make out afterwards was a rustling of something big moving and some very faint breathing sounds like somebody who smoked a pack a day their entire life. Incredibly raspy. We both give each other glances of puzzlement, figuring somebody was just maybe messing with us, or maybe it was a homeless person. It was very weird. I mean, nobody could get in there. There was industrial barbed wire fencing, and beyond the fencing was trees. The surrounding area was just thick woods that connected to a national forest, I believe. So... After glancing for maybe five or some more seconds, we're both just like, huh, and we go back to chit-chatting. Then the next thing you know, we hear this loud crunch of a tree branch, followed by even more rapid deep breathing. We turn our attention again, and this time, we glance towards the side of the trees and we see a thing. I say thing because I don't know what it was, but it was hunched over and then stood up to its full height. Sean and I both saw it, and Sean was so shocked he drops his cigarette. This thing was a large, hairy creature, and might I add how ugly it was. It also appeared to have a snout, and had deep, set in eyes. This thing was well over six feet tall, maybe no more than eight or nine feet. It was pretty tall. It had kind of grayish-black fur, and the more we saw its face, the more hideous it was. To better explain what it looked like, imagine orangutan, or Alf, if you remember Alf. It was like a monkey crossed with a wolf. It was just ugly. It had some more human-like traits, while others were more canine-like. I remember two large rows of pointed teeth. It, too, had a very wide snout. I guess think like Alf, but add some canine features to it, and make it a little bit more scary-looking. It slowly bent down, looked up at us, and stood up right away against the fencing, staring at us. It just glared, and after a couple more moments, it turned away and went back into the trees. I looked at Sean, and he looked at me. He was terrified, and we used this as an opportunity to run back inside and end our break. We told our boss and other co-workers nothing. We finished out our shifts terrified out of our minds that we saw this thing. After work, Sean and I would only talk about it briefly, that we never saw anything like it before, and 
nobody would ever believe us, even if we did tell somebody. We talk to each other once in a while about it, but not really. I mean, we generally don't mention what we saw, and especially to anybody else. We do still hang out on break and talk about things like we normally did, but not like this. I don't think we'll ever be as comfortable as we were. The sighting has kind of changed us. I'm really not sure what we saw that evening. Maybe you could help me out. My daughter, 12 years old at the time, had stayed overnight with me, and we had fallen asleep on the living room couch. We awoke around 7.15 a.m. to see this entity standing by the window. The first thing I noticed immediately was hair hanging down over its face and down the back of its head and neck. It was weird looking. It was covered in nasty matted hair and looked like an ugly dog. It was staring at us. I felt like I was paralyzed and could not get up off the couch. I was petrified to say the least. We had a staring competition for what seemed like forever, and I finally was able to scream. And just before it turned and walked away, my daughter had awakened and seen this thing too. She immediately became hysterical. She runs up to me and collapses on me crying. I phoned the police after it walked away, but they told me there was really nothing they could do about it. Well, a couple of nights later and we had completely forgotten all about the whole thing. My daughter's father had come to come pick her up for the weekend, and as he's getting her into his truck, I hear him start yelling, just as I got back in the house. I go back outside and I see this thing, the same thing we saw last night approaching my now ex-husband and daughter. I froze again and could not get my body into gear. I was so terrified I couldn't even move. My ex-husband pulls out his pistol and fires at it, hitting it in the chest. But the thing never flinched. It just kept coming. Eventually, it turned and began to walk off. He shot at it again in the back. But again, it didn't even flinch. It just walked off, up and over, up a hill. It never even stopped. The man always keeps a firearm on him. And I'm glad he did because who knows what this thing would have done had he not had a weapon. What I can't believe is that he shot it and this thing didn't even react. It was just evil. So he's flipping out, asking me if I saw that. And I start to tell him about how we just saw it at the window the other night. I asked him to follow me up into the house so I could show him with the situation and where I was when we had seen it. I showed him and we exited the house and he goes around and looks and you could see, which I didn't see, but there were impressions in the ground where this thing had been clearly standing. He seemed quite shocked, but at the same time, he seemed like he knew what he'd been seeing that night. There wasn't any feet prints, but you could just see something big and heavy had been standing here right in front of our window. I shudder at the thought that this thing could have been there for a while, watching us sleep before we even awoke to see it. For the next four to five months, we had weird sensations all around the house and property, feeling like we're either not alone or being watched. But to us, we never did see that thing again after that. My ex-husband, after that, always brought around his 44 with him. At that point, every time he came to pick up and drop off our daughter, never did have an experience like that again for the remainder of the time that I lived in that house. This was in May of 1985, and I moved out of that house shortly after, Thanksgiving of the same year. Lately, all of the animals in our neighborhood have started to act strangely. We can attribute these behaviors to none other than supernatural forces. At random times, all of our animals will begin to act strangely, barking, hissing, and acting crazy at the woods surrounding our houses. Our cats recently have gone missing, and so have our small dogs. While some of us believe that it's a pack of coyotes, or something on the loose. I know better. Whatever is there has taken an interest in our pets for reasons still unknown. If this is in fact paranormal, entering an aggressive, directly territorial combat response is illogical, as in nature. Defense-based aggression is rarely the first response, 
based on the research, I believe that this is a being that is purposefully waiting for just the right moments to strike. They know, or it knows, how we behave, yet we do not know its behaviors. It's extremely patient, cunning, and intelligent. It's not a coyote, fox, or wolf. I've seen the wanderings of coyotes, and there appears to be a kind of intelligent guiding in their behavior. Based on emotional interference and drawing from memory, coyotes, even in packs, seem apprehensive when coming into certain territories of neighborhoods due to large populations. We live in areas with a lot of wildlife and birds anyway, so it's very natural to assume that coyote behavior is simple fear of human beings. These cats, though, that are being snatched away in small dogs aren't animals straying far away from populated areas in the neighborhood. They're being snatched up from the yards or back porch. Something is taking them, and nobody is sure what it is. From other experiences alone in the woods, we know it's not your typical animal in nature. This has to be the work of something else entirely. What? I'm not quite sure. Is it possible that this is a dogman or a Bigfoot? Absolutely, since they are usually the ones to be a little bit more aggressive when it's coming in for food and based on stories and other experiences. But at what scale do we really call this a dogman or squatch? How many animals have to disappear? This has to be something else that we are not experiencing or understanding. What is creepy is that this is going on mostly at night, when everybody's asleep, in the early morning hours. That's when these animals are disappearing and nobody is finding a single trace of them. My girlfriend, in fact, asked me one night if I saw movement out in the yard, but I didn't see what she was talking about. She shot up out of bed to look and said she could have sworn she saw a big shadow moving around quickly between yards, but I dismissed her outright. And you know, it's really got me thinking. Maybe there is truth to what she had to say. So far, nobody has found a trace of any animals, no blood trails, no clues, and never any bones. I do think we will find the remains at some point, but who knows? I honestly have no idea. In late April of 1937, a Ute Indian by the name of John Walker says that he encountered a night monster spider that spoke and warned against entropy while it wound its claws around him. According to the Sioux Nations, a skinwalker can act as a bear a wolf or a coyote, even a fleshwalker, or a moon-illuminated skinwalker, a subcult of skinwalkers. There have been reports of many moon natives. Commonly, the Sioux and the Ute refer to these humanoid spider-like beings with multiple arms and distorted faces with large fangs. While not necessarily resembling that of a spider, half-man, half-spider like you would think from the name it's actually been called a night spider for many who have seen it. Many believe, like skinwalkers, that these are actually a derivative of skinwalkers or shapeshifters, originating of the practice of shapeshifting and dark magic. While rarely talked about, there are several reports of seeing these strange arachnid-like cryptids for years and years, often much more rare than people would like to talk about. These have been known to be spotted by a well-known explorer of cryptids, Richard Freeman, more often than not in obscure and deserted areas all throughout the country. Although it is doubtful they can be caught, as they quickly dart back into the night after fleeing from an encounter. I can't be certain as to what tribes and cultures of natives have their own experiences with these beings, like they do with Bigfoot and Dogmen. Again, I'll state that these beings are dangerous in their own right, but I believe they are a sect of skinwalkers that use their dark magic to contort their bodies to evil-looking things. During the days of the Blackfeet and Sioux Wars, a Sioux Indian by the name of Little Coyote claims he was sucked up into the sky by the spirit of a skinwalker. He claims he was sucked up into the sky and somehow ended up in a dark cavern, is how he described it. Surrounding him in the cavern, were these night spider creatures, what he described as half-man, half-beast, with multiple arms, 
black hair, and huge fangs all over their face. Terrified, he managed to break free, and managed to break free of the trap. The question remains is that he was sucked up into the sky, but yet somehow pulled underground. Is it possible that he was abducted, and then, while unconscious, placed underground? We don't know. Although there have been sightings of cryptids, night spiders aren't talked about all that much. Not as much as you would think. This was years ago, and I'm still terrified by what I experienced this night. This was from another world, and I've heard of skinwalkers, and seen this coyote thing come onto our field multiple times, but never did I imagine I would encounter anything like what we saw, like what my brother-in-law would refer to as something called a night spider. Before I get more into that, there would be mornings where I would see this tall, upright walking coyote thing kind of just hanging around our field, like it was always waiting and watching for the next opportunity to do something. It was incredibly unnerving. It would always just be crouching down in the tall grass and watching. There had been a couple of times it tried to make moves on some of our small dogs and livestock, and it did. They'd go missing. Our entire chicken coop was taken along with all the chickens in it. It was a small coop and not wired into the ground. Anyway, one morning, I look off to the left into the field. I don't see anything. I look to the right into the field, and I see this skinwalker creature that's staring back at me. Off in the distance, I see it almost every couple of mornings. It's out there and I want nothing to do with it. The same thing happens to my brother-in-law. He's very devout in the Navajo way. And he doesn't believe in what we call skinwalkers. It's like he's forced himself to confront this thing. One morning, he's out there in the field and this skinwalker, faceless, sneaks up from behind him, real close. How did it know my brother-in-law was Navajo? How does it know he's a spiritual man? It's like it puts thoughts in the mind and does what it wants. He wasn't seeing that, of course, but it's just a powerful energy. It was about as hideous as you can imagine it being. It grabs hold of my brother, and he's screaming prayers in Navajo, and this thing takes complete hold of him, dragging him back while subduing him. After it gets to about the edge of the field and lets go of him, it flees off, continuing to pray and shout. I'm not sure what my brother-in-law said, but it must have worked. The skinwalker had let go of him and fled off into the woods nearby. Right after he was freed, he's going crazy, telling me to never encounter it. Never go looking for it. Although, I don't go looking for it. At least, I do my best not to. I try and keep my distance from these things, if you understand. Being a traditional Navajo has a purpose, but a lot of Christian religions are more open. Part of me understands because it's validation for a lot of Navajo way practitioners to accept. That's there I mean. There would be a lot of people not believing without visual proof. You know what I mean? Like, when I first saw it in the morning, I would tell my father-in-law and my wife's father what I saw. They'd say that I saw it two days prior in the same spot. As it started getting closer, I'd tell a friend and he'd say how he saw it two days again. Some people aren't really into that, or understanding the Navajo way. So, I respect that everybody has to make it their own mind. Now, the following couple of nights, this thing comes back, but it's much scarier than before. The first few times that we'd all seen it, it tried taking my brother-in-law, and it was in its coyote form. I say coyote form because that's the only way I can accurately depict but what this thing looked like. When it came back the following night, or a few nights later, it looked something akin to that of a night spider. If you don't know, night spiders are a branch of shapeshifters under the skinwalker umbrella, and they specialize shapeshifting into these abominable beings. Instead of wearing animal skins like traditional skinwalkers, they use their dark magic to contort and turn into these hideous beings. They usually have multiple arms and 
large claws on each hand, deep sunken in black eyes, large black fangs protruding from their chest and mouth. They crawl more on their fours than they do walk around upright. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of these cryptids, but that's what I've heard them referred to as by many of the natives. I had no idea they were even a thing until I saw one with my own eyes the following night, as I'm about to discuss. So, I'm outside at night, pondering the day, having a small glass of whiskey that I just poured myself. I hadn't even taken into consideration that, well, I'd only had maybe one or two sips off the glass at the time, and I see this thing approaching from the field, the same spot where this creature disappeared the day before with my brother-in-law. I immediately knew it was this creature, but I did not recognize the form it was in. I just knew deep down it wasn't a good thing. As it came closer, even with how much light there was that night, I saw enough to horrify me. Immediately after its appearance, I went inside and woke up my wife. She had this big comfort over her, so I couldn't exactly see her face. I asked her about it first, and she's like, no, there's nothing. You've just been drinking. It's the shadows. But I pushed that aside and wanted to make sure that she saw it too. I wanted assurance that I was not crazy. But she refused to budge, so I'm like, okay, screw it. And I go grab my 44 out of the closet, step back onto the porch. And in that moment, I nearly soiled my britches right there. Ten feet away from the porch, this thing is just standing there, like it was standing its ground on a contested territory. I got a good look at this thing. It looked like it came from the pits of hell itself. It was maybe slightly more taller than six feet, and it looked exactly like the night spider that I had mentioned. It was challenging me, and so I slowly pulled out my 44 and aimed it right at the center of this thing. I felt like I couldn't pull the trigger, like this thing was controlling my body. I felt myself tense up and had this paralysis coming over me, shooting through my body. This creature slowly smirks at me. I felt like I couldn't pull the trigger, like this thing was controlling my body. I felt myself tense up and had this paralysis feeling shooting all throughout my body. This creature smirks at me slowly, and I felt myself losing total control of my body. My hand, with the finger still on the trigger, starts to turn my 44 inwards towards my chest. I'm frozen and can't fight off what is going on with my body, as this thing is practically controlling my own muscles. Just as I am putting the 44 right against my own chest, against my will, the loudest gunshot I'd ever heard goes off, and this thing gets shot right in the chest from behind and lets out a horrible scream, like you wouldn't believe. Instantly, I feel my muscles relax and I drop my 44. This thing starts screaming radically and begins running off into the night as my brother-in-law came to me. He felt something was wrong and came just in the nick of time, like some sort of crazy sixth sense or something. He had shot this thing nearly point blank right in the back, comes rushing over to me to make sure I'm okay. Let me just say that as I'm recalling these events, I'm trying to do my best not to make it sound like some crazy fake story. I want to express it in a way that it's terrifying, but also does the story justice. And this thing was somehow nearly getting me to kill myself via mind control or something. This is where my brother-in-law, who, by the way, like I stated, is full Navajo and told me about night spiders, what they are and how they have this horrible ability to take possession of anybody they target to make them do their evil bidding. He much refers to them as physical demons that have a form and shape. Anyway, there's not much else to add, but I wanted to say this before I had never ever really heard of a night spider before. Whether it's that of a skinwalker or whatever, they're extremely dangerous beings that should be kept at a distance at all times as best as you can. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. I'm sure I've missed some details here along the way. I have a friend that I've known for years. 
He is both Native American and an avid hunter and outdoorsman. He has experienced his share of strange things happening to him, but they do not fit entirely with a lot of the stories told of true skinwalkers. However, one particular time, I was shown some odd things that he said followed a strange encounter. He goes on some pretty strange country with very steep and rugged inclines, elevation around 7,600 feet. One time, it was following a summer butchering and he was down in Apache country, which is just below the Mogollon Rim. He was tracking a wounded deer that jumped into some dense brush and after a couple of hours, he reaches the top of the catchment basin many, many hours later, after running and tracking. He then comes across a small cave with lots of old pot shirts, which he examined at length to determine the condition they were in. Then he found some clay-like images that had seemingly been made either by pressing the trenching into the ground or by applying water. He told me that the more he left them alone, the better they would get. So he would like to go back there at night. Unfortunately, he's not been able to go back. I promised him I would not divulge into any of these secrets of his, and to the best of my ability as an investigator and explorer of these phenomena, that is my promise to him. He has also had some other very strange happenings around the local environment. Usually, buffalo will trample along with the deer, and he said that only a few times did he actually catch either a creature or see its image not fully formed or a fleeting shadow. It is all very difficult when he tells me this to comprehend, but reality is, he is telling them the same as I am about to tell you. The most horrible sighting he had was when he was walking about at nighttime, and claims he saw a creature unlike anything he's ever seen before. He described it as to have several arms with large black claw appendages, large black tusks on its face and its chest, ink black eyes, and covered in long hair. It moved at an extraordinary rate of speed, and to be honest, he isn't sure what he saw, I mean, at all. It was like a mixture of both human and animal. Not like the whole werewolf thing, but this thing had appendages and tusks and eyes. Not quite humanoid, but not quite werewolf-like either. It looked different. It had long appendages and huge black claws. It was chasing him while he was in his truck. He said that it kind of reminded him of a large spider, but it was also like that of a man, with the way it ran and it had this horrendous scream. After it lapped him entirely, it quit screaming and he said he could just hear its movements in the brush on the side of the road as it was trailing away from him. He turned on the road, drove off, and he tells me he has never been so scared. I asked many questions of him because this whole thing just didn't make sense to me. I have since, over the course of about two to three hours conversing with him, seen him turn ashen white over his recollection of this event, and he said that this particular one was the creepiest thing he has ever experienced. He goes deep into Native American stories and how this figure is known as a skinwalker, or so he believes, and that this particular one is a very, very dark and powerful one, and there actually used to be a sect of them that guarded Indian villages. He also told me that what he thought that night was not a traditional skinwalker, but a witch who is far more powerful. When talking to me, he used the actual word his tribe calls them, and out of respect, I won't use the word, so I'll just say skinwalker. He said these beings were something else altogether, and they were not just skinwalkers. He also chased by something just the other night, what he believes to be the same creature. It could be another kind of spirit that was chasing him, but... Before I relay the story, I'll let him tell it from his perspective. He tells me this, and I quote, I was walking through the Native American res grounds and mountains and heard what sounded like a loose metal sheet. A big four dump truck on a dirt road can do this with the right gravel. So I stopped to listen for it. I couldn't hear anything for a bit as my heart seemed to want to rather speed up or implode. 
something cool was blowing past my legs, and I stood still, trying to sort this out. After a minute, I walked with the current, and I slowly began to hear the metal noise. I realized that I was not near any of the roads in my area, just meadows. I hear something large running towards me, and when I shone my light, I saw it was the exact same creature as the night that it chased my truck. I turned and ran. It ran away though, rather than give chase. I have been having thoughts of it over and over as I recall this experience, almost obsessively. Then, he tells me more that, interestingly enough, this is not the only encounter he has experienced around this area, and he has told me of a time that he was very young. He had gone to go hunting with his uncle, had come across a large buck. He was in a tree and his uncle was on the ground. His uncle and him were talking and the buck made the same grunt as his uncle made. These skinwalkers are said to be very smart. They know things. They imitate sounds and people and see into the minds of people. His uncle drew his attention to this thing and it began shape-shifting right in front of them into this large, beastly man covered in animal skins and began levitating. This person or being levitated away like it just went up in the sky. Very slowly, but they never saw where it landed. He never heard anything from this at all, and it all happened so quickly. This is just a small list of all the things he's gone through. I'll see if maybe I can have him reach out to you, personally, and you can email him, or even interview him. Okay, so a few months ago, we were coming home from taking a friend to Phoenix. It was probably 12.30, 1 in the morning. I turned off on a road we usually take around to see if anything was around. We get to a waypoint that we usually use as a turnaround point. We shoot handguns out there all the time. 22s, typical planking things that we do. You point the guns down a range, they shoot, you shoot them off, whatever, that's it. So, we got out to this point already with a friend that stays at another ranch with us, and it's about a half mile to about one mile into an area. This is where we go all the time. It's pretty safe. It's another friend's property, actually, and we've never had any issues. There's also a lot of old ATV trails all around the area. Before we set anything up for night shooting, we start hearing these creepy sounds off in the dark. Now, me and my brother are both shining our lights around, asking, Did you hear that? Am I just hearing things? What is that? This wasn't normal stuff here. We've heard things in the night like coyotes and just strange noises, but this was something else entirely. Like clicking noises and just strange sounds. So, desperately, we start looking around and try to identify the source of these strange and bizarre noises. When my brother... I hear him start cussing and running back to the truck. I turn to look and I see this thing running at him. Creeped out is a huge understatement here. Whatever this was had multiple long limbs and had these massive pincer-like things on its face and large black eyes. It was running full force. I took a couple of shots at it myself. We get back in the truck, make it a couple miles down the road, hauling butt, and we're stopped by a cop who showed up because he was convinced we were shooting off into people's property. Our plans here were to go and have fun plinking, so we had to be careful not to tell the officer that we had seen this creature. He would have thought we were on drugs or something. We didn't just shoot out illegally, and he kept trying to make that the issue. So we got into a little bit of a gun argument, which here in Arizona, I don't know, it's not California-like, that you can do this and you can't do that. We're not saying that this is all. We all know the laws are just as is. Firearms can be very touchy here. They don't include recreational shooting, which we have a lot of out here. A lot of hunting. It creates issues apparently, and we held back from saying anything about the encounter with the cop. I mean, that's the thing. How do you prove a skinwalker? What I believe we encountered that night, how do you prove they exist? How do you prove that we were a bunch of people who go to shoot and enjoy this stuff for fun without looking like we were out to cause mischief? Again, I assume it was a skinwalker, 
and not something else. But I don't know. I'm speaking from ignorance. You're the so-called expert here, so maybe you could help. My parents always owned a bunch of land, and they have roughly a hundred acres. They only ever used a couple for their own horses and for everything. There's this one part on the tree line that we've been seeing a lot of evidence of some sort of animal in our backyard. Like, whatever my grandpa goes to take care of it, it just disappears into the woods and can't be seen from our backyard. We've tried to relax about it and begin hunting, but without any luck. It was just doing some stalker stuff like in the movies. So, I got told a couple of weeks ago that this creature has killed my gang's cow. This thing, whatever it is, ate all the guts and whatever that was inside the cow, leaving the body to kind of dry up. But the calf was still perfectly intact, just dead. The chickens will even try to chase it away, I guess, if it gets too close to our house. I guess that's why the coop and everything about them is gone. I know for a fact it hides in the woods. I know it does. Whenever the dog looked away, we could see it stand up and stay. Even though before that it could not be seen and when it did, it would run. It's looking more and more like a skinwalker every day. I've read enough stories online to see that many people deal with things like this on a daily basis. I think that's what I'm dealing with. Our livestock, when we put them out, they start acting super timid and scared. We know this thing is around. There's no denying that. We proceed to hear these weird screeches and growls all throughout the hours of the night. And when it does, the glowing yellow eyes never fail to accompany them. And livestock always go missing after. We're scared. Help me. We had been driving for hours, holding up against the late night traffic for close to an hour and a half. It felt like rush hour, and the miles melted under us in a slow motion, as if we were traveling through a dimension where time and space was distorted, and the speed of light was no longer a constant. At the same time, that same car that had been tailgating us pulled up alongside. At first, I was awestruck by the fact that there seemed to be something wrong with the driver as they zoomed past by, but I didn't think much about it. Once we made it out of the city, the fog around us seemed to clear up a bit, but only for a brief few moments. From the distance, I see some lights flashing. We keep driving, but at a slower pace out of caution. I was hesitant to pull over when I see this large, what I can only describe now hear me out, as a demon come barreling towards my car from the darkness. It was this eight, nine foot tall monster, piercing dark eyes, razor claws, and skin that was gross looking, like it was dark and leathery, and it had large pincher-like fangs from its face, jet black eyes, and it even appeared to have multiple arms all down its back. It came rushing at my car head first and I had to swerve out of the way just enough in time to ensure I did not crash around another driver in the oncoming lane. I have no idea what I just witnessed, but I now know that this was no person in a costume, it wasn't some escaped gorilla, it wasn't anybody or any animal I had ever seen or known about. I should have called the cops. I didn't. I just sat at the side of the road, trying to process what just happened, what did I saw. As this is going on, I see it again in my rearview mirror, this time further down the road out of the fog. It was coming in my direction, chasing my vehicle. It was too close to make me feel any what comfortable, so I quickly pulled up out of that spot and I started driving at breakneck, very illegal speeds to try and get away from whatever this being was. Look, I'm sorry I'm terrible at writing my own story down, but... That's the basic premise of what happened. It was a chilly, foggy evening here in southwest Washington. I often took my children out biking here in the evenings to get a quick bit of exercise 
before they settled down for the night. I wasn't looking forward to this run for the usual reasons. Not only were there no close bike paths, but the air today was chilly, and the fog had been pretty thick for most of the day. It was enough to disrupt visibility, not just of the nearby branches and shrubs, but even other people. I didn't like that. As a parent, I preferred clear and total visibility. There was always a reason to be a little concerned, but this evening, something felt different. Something was off. We were out for maybe a half hour when my daughter, angry at her sibling, lashed out and punched him. They had been fighting all evening up until this point, and I had just about had enough. Angrily, telling them enough, we turned around and headed back as punishment. The only thing left to do was now set our sights towards home. I turned and took lead, and a look of shock was on my face. I tried my best to focus on the darker part of the path, and I found myself looking at what I can only decipher as one thing. A single roadside reflector. The low light caused it to kind of stand out on the side of the empty blacktop road. As I'm looking up and just kind of taking in my surroundings of the ever-dimming light, I see movement off in the brush next to me. A creature gazed back at me, tall, hunched over, with multiple legs and these large, bulbous black eyes staring at me. We all pedaled as fast as we could down the road. I told my son to pick up the bike, and we hightailed it out of there soon after. He didn't speak for long, and only when I asked him if he saw anything like Mommy did. His big poor eyes told me everything I needed to know. He saw it too, and pointed in the road, saying it was that thing just down there that he saw, and it looked like a spider monster, is what he said. I have to assume that this was our warning. I don't know why it's so hard for me to trust my gut instinct in retrospect. In any case, I wasn't proud. I'm sorry if this seems frazzled and all over the place, but we don't bike in this area anymore, ever after this incident. And to date, I have no idea what we saw. I was outside with a group of friends on vacation in Maryland. At the time, I was a Marine Sergeant stationed in Germany. We had spent the day outdoors burning stuff we didn't want, and at about 2200 hours, we had decided to go to our cabin. It was on a mountain about five miles west outside of Cumberland. At the time, our memory was that we started to hear some popping that sounded like light firecrackers around 2300 hours. I had a counter with me, and I heard no clicks, and so I didn't think much of it. From the beginning, we heard this noise and it sounded like a herd of goats running. It started getting closer and closer, and many of us were kind of like, what? And we get to the top of this hill and we're doing some night hiking, just for fun and giggles. We had flashlights and, of course, we're all very curious to find out exactly what we were hearing. We had been hearing strange noises and so we shine the light in the direction of the noise. And lo and behold, this thing lit up. All of us gasped, including I. This being what is now fully illuminated by our lights was unlike anything you could think or see in a movie. It was clung to a tree like some sort of tree spider or something, but also looked very human. It had dark, dead, leathery-looking skin, several arms that clung to the tree and these massive black claws in each of its hands. That's how it clung on so well. The face was smaller but had these giant inward fangs. They reminded me of giant teeth that were black. As soon as I shine my light on, I just knew that what we were dealing with in the moment, in my time, wasn't human at all. This was something very different altogether, and I'm ashamed to admit that even me, with military experience, fled in fear of this thing as we all did. We all went running for fear of this creature coming after us. As I was running, I was slipping and I fell. I looked up and the thing lunged at me, but barely missing me thanks to some thicker brush near right where I fell. I quickly was able to pull myself up, but I knew I didn't have a lot of time to separate myself from this thing. We managed to escape its grasp and lost it after we ran a bit further. All of us terrified 
and out of breath and unsure of what we had just encountered. For the longest time, I thought it was an alien. I mean, I've never heard or known of a creature like this in my life. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't know what we had encountered. And it wasn't until years ago when I found out the definition. It was something called a night spider, I guess. I learned it from an old native shaman when I arrived back in Germany. I'm glad to know that this is now becoming a known occurrence of what this thing probably is. Although I've never heard anybody else ever talk about this creature. A lot of people think that this specific account is fake, as seeing as sightings like this can be rare. I wanted to come out years ago with this, but I never had solid investigative case to back me up. The case and evidence was for all of you that want the truth. I know this is real. I have no reason to make this up. Please make my details anonymous. Thank you what lurks beneath. I was in my 20s. My fiancé and I had set up a small camp set up just off the main campsite, up here in the beautiful Ozarks. The camp area included a few trees and had the stone fire rings around these nice intricate fire pits. We had been there for about a week with some friends and their kids, enjoying an uber-long camping trip. The kids had been playing in the back of our camp area and had ran up to the front of the camp. All of a sudden, the kids began yelling. The friend that was with them said that they all ran up the hill and hid underneath a picnic table. He said that he grabbed his children and ran up to the main campsite. They were all scared and shouting about something big coming after them. We thought they were playing around and didn't think much of it. My fiancé and I were out by the campfire when this happened. I was working on a wood carving, and she was sitting beside me. I had looked up, and she just had this strange look on her face. She said she wanted to show me something. She had been meaning to talk to it about me now for some time. And I was like, okay. And so she brought me back to a tree that was about 20 or so feet out, the furthest spot around our tent and camping area. She pointed to a spot far out in a rather medium-sized field just a short distance away. She points to this lone fir tree in this small meadow. She says that she saw a strange creature observing her a few nights prior at that distance. She had a double take because of what it looked like, she said. I wasn't sure what she was getting at, but as she was describing it to me, she says that she believes the kids had seen it too. She said it was standing on two legs and was huge that it had multiple arms and huge claws and these giant fangs, almost like an upright spider or something, she described it. She says that it was up and close to the tree, and its eyes were glowing. She says it was most likely bald, but had small specks of hair the lower you went down onto this thing. It was kind of hanging onto the tree, and it was standing next to it like it had just come down from it. So, we walked back towards the fire, talking about what she had seen off and far in the distance. I hear this ear-piercing scream unlike anything I've ever heard before. Call it cliché or what, but the way my wife reacted to her showing me what she saw was alarming. Then I hear this. It didn't sound like it was from a known animal that I have ever heard. That's what's creepy, is we all heard that scream come from the same direction that my wife saw the thing in the small meadow, staring at her just a couple of nights before. Just further off into the woods, shortly after, we heard that and sat back down by the fire. The kids come running back up, all pale as a sheet of paper, saying they saw a monster on the way back from hiking, out in the woods near close by. They were all scared and went on to describe what they saw in vivid detail, matching exactly what my wife had just told me prior to these kids coming back. To make a long story short, after that happened, I had to get everybody settled down and calm. We never did hear anything like that again high up in the mountains that night. There was a lot of commotion with the kids being scared of what if and if this thing might come back, but we never heard any more noises. We stayed up late around the campfire after everybody went up to their camping spots. 
I had my big buck knife with me, and I was using it to carve another wooden piece. We didn't hear anything, and thankfully the night went quiet. I was able to sleep. We were only about 20 feet from the campfire. The thing is around where we camped, and I've heard of Bigfoot and UFO activity, but never paid much attention to it out here. I'm not saying what my wife saw and what we heard was a Bigfoot necessarily, but I firmly believe her that she saw something. The same thing that made that noise. We had a lot of Bigfoot stuff happening on that trip and never saw anything else besides the one encounter. Now sometimes, when I sleep at night, I'll hear that same scream in my dreams come piercing into my head at night. I wake up in cold sweats sometimes. It was really scary and out of this world. This is a two-part story. The first part details this alien craft, which we saw and leads us well into part two, where after that, my family and I were stalked by this strange arachnid-like creature for months. This happened in late September of 2006. Myself and a group of friends and family had gone to New Mexico desert to ride around on four-wheelers and have a good time. At this time, I was 16. We had camped out all weekend and we were ready to go home. It was roughly 10 o'clock in the morning. We all get back to the parking lot area. We had our trucks all lined up and were loading up the truck that had all the food and everything we needed. We were basically just getting ready to leave and the rest of the group was going to be on their own. We had to ride back to Flagstaff. I was sitting in the back of the truck with my cousins and were looking up in the morning sky. Then we noticed a star or orb that wasn't moving. Then right across from the horizon there was this really bright white light that was moving back and forth where it was at. It looked like it went down and I couldn't see it anymore. Me and my cousins saw this thing and were all amazed at what it was. We speculated it was a UFO, but we weren't sure. Then, after it had disappeared from sight, all of us, my parents and family included, began hearing this incredibly loud humming noise coming from up above us. It sounded like a plane or something, maybe 400 feet directly above us. Only problem is, when you look up, there's nothing there. All of us were very confused and perplexed by this, and none really knew how to explain away this. Okay, that's weird. Let's just continue with our journey back to Flagstaff. The humming eventually fades away, and we're en route to get back on the way we needed to go. This is right when we end up seeing something straight from the movie Independence Day. It's almost like it instantly appeared. And my way to explain this is that this ship or craft had to have been cloaked. That's the only way I can explain it. We're on a stretch of road that we're the only ones and that humming mechanical noise comes back. We're looking around to see the source and figuring maybe it's just a plane flying overhead. Well, we're all looking ahead and above and all we see is this thing at the same time passing over us. It would have been impossible to see this thing just over our car, and not anywhere else in the sky. Hence why I say my opinion that it was cloaked. It was this massive black cube, several hundred feet thick, and maybe hundreds of feet across. Just a massive cube right over our car. It didn't make any noise except for that loud humming sound that was more static-like than ever. I will tell you this, that thing was not a blimp. It had tons of lights on it, and it was huge. It was very strange and all of us saw this thing in the truck. We're in total awe and screaming and yelling at each other in terror and excitement. Being like, can you believe this? What we're seeing? Is this some sort of government craft? After a moment or two of hovering, just vanish into thin air. It was the hot topic for easily the next few hours. The rest of the way home, as we had no idea how to possibly explain it away. Anyone who knows about motherships knows that the U.S. government has been watching them for years. They have stuff like this in the U.S. government bases. I will tell you that I'm not crazy neither. So, anyway, we were also all sober. Nobody was under the influence of any drugs or substances or alcohol. 
And I should mention that this craft stayed there for a few moments, then quickly shot directly vertically up and out of sight. Now, this leads us into the next part of our story. After the whole UFO thing, the energy around our house really began to change. My parents began fighting all the time. My siblings and I fought constantly. It felt as though the peace within our house had been taken. You could just feel there was some sort of shift in the atmosphere. I'm not saying the changes took place immediately, but shortly after the sighting. Then, within a couple of weeks, this strange arachnid creature started trying to break into our house at night. I call it that because, based on its features and the way it behaved, I'm not sure what else I should refer to it as. It was not a person, I'll tell you that much. And it was not a bear or dog, or animal that I know of. It could have been some mutant. One night, I was watching TV, thinking about playing some PS2, when I see this thing coming up to the house from the sliding glass door. I see it coming, and I'm like, is that a large dog? Thinking to myself because of how it looked in the dark approaching the house. And then, I see it's actually not a dog, but something else altogether. The way it was moving around on six plus feet. Let's just say it was kind of like slithering. It had a human body and multiple arms, and long, singular claws that dug into the ground to pull itself along. The head was human, but with two eyes, and a mouth full of black, sharp teeth. It looked arachnid if that makes sense. It was pretty scary, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, my reaction in the moment was nothing like how I'm describing it. I'm cool, calm, and collective. But in the moment, I began screaming and ran back towards my room from the living room. Bam! I hear this thing smack against the sliding glass door, and what sounds like trying to break it down or open it with great force. After a few moments, it stops altogether. My parents weren't home this night, just me, and I decided to keep it to myself. Well, the next few nights, I guess the same thing tried to breaking into my parents' room, trying its hardest to pry open the window, but it could not. It scared my sisters and my parents to death, as I guess they got a pretty good look at it. This happened several more times over and over, until finally, after a few months, it just stopped showing up altogether. Then, about a month later, my dad suddenly passed away. Our family was devastated, and I always look back at this scenario and can't help but wonder if what we saw and experienced had anything to do with his passing. 